rolling. Rolling. Remember that song by uh, Lincoln? Keep rolling, 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 rolling. What? Yeah, what was that? Fred Durst. What Limp was this? Limp Bizkit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, there we go. See, you're way younger than me, That's too, but you still got that. Your L I M P biscuit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, Kurt, thank you very much for joining me. Kurt. Thanks for having me. Kurt Tosi. 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 Yes. What's the story behind that last name? Uh, Italian, yeah. American. Uh, my grandma is from Italy. Uh, my dad and both my mom and dad are from New York, uh, East Coast. I was born in California, but um, there I was raised like East Coast, Italian, New York family. Um, and in Italian, technically my last name is Tocci. Tocci. Two C's are the the, the Tochi, right. That's how I wanted to describe it. Right, right. Not wrong. And 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 this is my whole life. Like, imagine grade school. It's like, you know, every graduation, it was Kurt Toki. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, no matter what. They knew me for like six years, and they still couldn't say my last name right. But uh, we just decided to pronounce it Tossy. For whatever reason, I don't think there's a reason behind it other than they wanted to. All right. <laughs> It was nice. It's nice when you like take control and you can actually like decide how your name is going to be. Sure. Yes. How your name is going to be uh, uh, pronounced, pronounced yeah. to the world. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it like growing up in New York? I didn't grow up in New York. It, I was born in California and uh, uh, lived here for like a year in California and then uh, moved to Texas for like a year and a half of my life. But then by the time I was like three, we moved to Colorado. And so I lived in Colorado my whole life. So I always say I'm from Colorado okay. just because I spent from age three all the way through high school um, in Colorado. And then once I graduated, I moved back out here to California. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's strange because like the United States is small compared to where we are globally. Very, yeah. But, but it's so regional because, like, when you talk to people, like, no, 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 I'm not from there. I'm from here. Like, there's a lot of pride in, like, where you're from, mm. where you're not from, where your family was from. Like, it all does kind of circle back. Yeah, it's very, I mean, that's associated with, you know, everything. Sports teams as well. Like, everything down to, like, your home field is like, yeah, like, we're from Denver. Yeah, Colorado. Yeah, this, this, this. Or other people are like, oh, we're from Texas. Yeah, Texas. Yeah. And... Um, like Europe is so big that like you're, it's about the country more so than like obviously with the states, it's individual regions like you were saying. But yeah, uh, yeah I imagine the same pride of being from like your individual state is kind of how it is with Europe, like whatever region you're from. I know um, football or soccer is yeah. big. So like wh whatever your club is, I, I feel like it, the, it, it the, doesn't it doesn't even matter where you live in Europe. Right. You, right. As long as you it just depends on which club you support. Because you might have grown exactly. out there as a kid and supported them as a kid and then you move somewhere else, but they're that's But whoever important. your club is, it's yeah. how you identify. That's yeah, exactly. Which yeah. is it's kinda like that with American football here, but um your state still plays a pretty big part, I guess, in uh who you are <laughs> or what kind of person you are. Oh, you're from fill in the blank state? Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but Californians are stereotyped as, you know, vain, you know, selfish into themselves, like very, and that's kind of how people are in L.A. It's very like. That's, that's entirely what L.A. It, is. It's yeah. a dog. It's, kinda dog. Nice. it's nice, but it's also like, it's nice in a way that it makes me focus on what I'm, you know, uh, going after, I guess you could say. Like, it, it, it makes me focus more because I'm like, all right, it's business, but the Colorado in me just gets walked on by I'm the kind of guy who will hold the door here in LA and like 25 people. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, no, go ahead. Okay, no, 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 go ahead. Like you, you just successfully described what it's like to be a Canadian living in the United States. That's yeah, probably yeah, very just accurate. Too, too nice to people. Too honest. Way too nice. Uh, too, you know, just too gentle around treating people around their feelings. Be a good person. That's it. Be a good person. Like, it's, on, again? it's uh, it's on my water bottle right there. Be, be a, good a good person. person. You yeah. got to remind yourself every day. It's the most basic concepts. <laughs> it is it's the not to remind basic. me, it's to remind everyone else. I don't need the reminder. And so if someone looks at it, they go, oh, man, I should be nicer to people oh, yeah. randomly. Yeah. But I feel like everyone's just so in their own head with career, work, status, you fill in the blank, followers. Well, that's this whatever. town. That's this town. I mean, but I like it because it's it's um, it's implied. 
Yeah. The moment you meet someone, right? It's implied the moment you meet someone. It's, it's implied a- the moment you try to do business with someone. So it's like, I like to call it like it's scheduled acts of nastiness. Like it, it it's like, I know, I know I, I have to meet this you're, person. Yeah. You're, you're prepared. You're prepared. You're prepared. I guess like you're prepared for the, the thick skin you have to have. The guard is already up. Yeah. Right? Like it's not like you're Isn't in. That sad. That's kind of sad though. Like. When I go back to Colorado, for example, and I visit home, it's like it it's like a different world. You every the people at the grocery store, you say, Hey, how's your day? Hey, hey, have a good day. Like, oh thanks. LA it's like, anything else? Like I'm like, no, get thank out. you. This will get out of my face. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry for shopping at your grocery store, I'll leave. Like it's like you I, I feel like I'm an inconvenience. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, inconvenience. You're inconveniencing people by being in LA, by breathing in LA. I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted my sushi. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I like. Um, like I said, here, great for business, you yeah. know, opportunities for sure, career, etc. cetera. Um, but there's no, at the personal life or the social life is like, it's a very big facade. Yeah, in LA, I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. It's tough, t- tough to meet real people doing real things. Very. You can't even get anyone to go to lunch anymore. It's like, it's like, wait, you do you want to go to lunch? Like, oh, you you have to you have to see what you're doing. Okay, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> I haven't had that. You know what I've had is I love the creative process. Like you, I love to be creative. I love to tell stories. Uh huh. Um, and I love meeting people because I really feel like when you meet someone face to face, that's where the energy comes from. That's where the sure. connection is, right? And if you can meet someone face-to-face and share that energy, share that connection, you can create together, I feel, in a much faster, more meaningful way than a Zoom call, right? And in this town now, since COVID, it's impossible, like you said, it's impossible to get anyone to meet you. Everyone just wants to have a Zoom call, but but I'll have like, I'll have someone in Beverly Hills that I want to meet and they're like, oh yeah, um, yeah, let's do a Zoom at 11. I'm like, why don't we meet for a coffee at 11? It's a five minute walk. And I just shake my cuss, just come down and shake my hand. Let's do it. It's like, no, no, we can do a Zoom. It's no problem. It's like, no one, everyone's just hiding in their homes. But it's like, no, people are just, they're so, like, it has to benefit on such a scale to make it worthy of the time, the human to human time, rather. Uh, fitting someone into a Zoom is like they can continue whatever they're doing at home or whatever they're doing without their day and they just stop for 20 minutes or, you know, whatever for a, a video call. They don't have to go anywhere. Right. And in LA, you're talking about the commute there to and from, yeah. right? Well, if it's five minutes away, that's different. But like for most people, it could be an hour plus one way and or, um, you know, depending on like like ourselves. We we had this, co- this podcast set for what was a Monday. Yeah. And I had such a stacked day on Monday and I was like, I don't think... And that was on me because I overfilled my plate with things that the time from where I had to travel from to get here and then do this however long this would end up being, yeah. plus the time to get back and be on time for the other commitment I had, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to do it. I was like, I have to I have to reschedule something. So like that is understandable, but like when you're five minutes away, there's a difference. If I was five minutes away, I'd be like, let's go. Like I can pull this off and that would be maybe an hour total of time, right? Yeah. Not Two hours of travel plus whatever I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. L.A. man is just—it's a whole lifestyle. It's a whole it's exhausting. It's it, a whole lifestyle. It's a good exhausting, but it's exhausting. <laughs> um, I did. I did write down something here. I, yeah. I do. I try to. I try not to do too much research. Okay. But I do need to call you out. So you are com- apparently somehow self-proclaimed the happiest creator on earth. Yeah. So I wanna. I, I I gotta I, I gotta get I gotta get deeper into this. So sure. so um, how do you well, well your happiest creator on earth? That's like your current job. That's your that's how you introduce yourself. Yeah, and all your social media. I actually don't ever introduce myself as that. No, I'm not like what's up guys, welcome back. It's the happiest creator on earth. I don't do that. Like I, it's just on my bio. It's a bio thing. It's not even a an introduction thing. Well, there's no difference between what we're seeing in the video and what you're proclaiming in your which is a in your thing. bio in your <laughs> bio, right? You're spot on. That's your, a good your, thing. Your branding is on. Perfect. But um, but how do you how do you even get into this line of work or this passion? Yeah. Or or bringing this kind of energy to it? Sure. From Colorado. Yeah, I think honestly, it's not even a Colorado thing. <laughs> it's it's just. Was it too much fresh air? <laughs> <laughs> it's that I'm at I'm at a higher level, right? I'm at that that mile high altitude that I'm 
I'm breathing fresher. Right. Uh, it's just a choice. It's kind of like the sticker, right? Like, it, it's a choice of how to attack each day. It's a choice of how to present yourself. It's a choice of how I choose to live or how I choose to treat other people. Uh, and that goes right down to my content. And that's just who I am as an individual. And I'm okay with being overly happy in a video because I am having so much fun making a video that, like, I, I'm just cringe. I'm so cringe in, like, a good way. Like, I'm okay with who I am. And the happiest creator on Earth is a play off of Disney, right? Happiest place on Earth, right? right? So I have done a lot of notable Disney uh, content that has done very well. Uh, I don't only do Disney stuff. There are some creators who, like, obviously only do Disney content. But, like, that's one of my subcategories that I thrive in because I'm very knowledgeable with the Disney brand. Sure. Um, and I just thought it was fitting. Happy. Uh, keeps I've keep smiling tattooed on my on my wrist. Right. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Right, where is it? Right there. Yeah. I keep smiling on my tat or on my wrist. Um, which is from a group, a creator group. The first thing that kind of got me into content full time, which was called Smile Squad. Really? Yes. <laughs> like, okay. Serious. So smile. <laughs> which is big in the Philippines and Asia. We're very big, or like a very big creator group. Huh. Um about bringing the world together one smile at a time through inclusion, um, cultures, uh, ethnicities, a anything. Like we would include all sorts of people, all sorts of types of, you know, anyone it's, in a video. It's hard to fault any group or organization that just wants to make it inclusive and we, have people smiling all the time. It was a loophole. It yeah. was a great loophole because it was a way to not exploit. I mean, you could look at it as like exploiting, but we would always get the actual person. If it was about so what it's like to have a Malaysian friend, we would find someone from Malaysia, we would write a script with them, and we would make a skit about what it's like to be Malaysian and the dynamic between an American and a Malaysian in like a relationship. And we would talk about the stereotypes and the fun, like, but punch upwards. Right. So it would celebrate the culture, but in a funny way way so when malaysians watch it they go oh my god that's so accurate yes we always experience this because we wanted to include that and we did that for every culture every culture every like everything you could possibly think of we did body body type uh type of person you know xyz we, we across the board and we we loved it and it was a great as a, as a whole group and how long ago was that so i did that from 2019 until 2022 uh, and then I kind of separated from the group because I wanted to not just be known as the guy from Smile Squad. It wasn't my group. Sure, I didn't. I didn't lead the group. I was like kind of forefront, but not definitely wasn't my team. Uh, so I separated to do my own thing, and sure. I have been since. And then Smile Squad has kind of drifted off. Everyone's kind of gone their own way. Uh, the brother's son premiere that I went to. Right. He was in Smile Squad. Oh, really? Yeah. So he was in the group, and that's how I became friends with him. And then now he's off to bigger and better things. It's amazing how many um, Asian celebrities, Asian actors, uh, have come out of like social media, or even, As or even reason, like, yeah. or even like Discovery Channel and stuff like that. I mean, the lead, um, Crazy Rich Asians. Mm -hmm. uh, the lead actor, I can't remember his name. I'm going blank at the moment. He got his start doing like food shows on Discovery Channel. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Because I worked for Discovery Channel for a few years and I was friends okay. with some of the producers that like quote unquote like found him. Got uh, you. And now he's doing, you know, you know, nine figure uh, releases. <laughs> not in, a bad day. <laughs> in the United States. So, so it's not a, not a bad day. Uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Very strange to go from like food and or travel on Discovery to full-on cinema film well he's just like a six foot five asian caucasian mixed you know yeah like handsome strong guy that everyone just yeah. gravitated towards so yeah. and that was it right i mean well aapi is also really big right now which is great like it's like we're as we grow as you know a, a civilization or as humans and we go through this life we're now like finally including other cultures other ethnicities you know into the limelight you know white people have done things for long enough right like yeah. and so it's like oh cool we can we can actually have success by mixing in other people weird like yeah. and so now we're in this upswing of 
everyone else, which is which is great. I think uh, I think the 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 storytelling element is is the key, right? And just finding stories, yeah. not just surrounding white people's lives. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. having and having you know more, um, you know, writers of of various backgrounds and uh, ethnicities exactly. and and yeah. uh, diversity, and and I think it really does have to start like at the writing stage. I really don't think you can. That's... I really don't think you can take like, and I think this is maybe part of the problem that we've had so far mm -hmm. is like, sometimes some of these diversity plays seem a little bit forced. Very, it's and, very and, like they're shoveling it. They're like. Here's the inclusion. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, why are you? And then it just comes off as like, woke, like forced, whatever we want to call it. But that's what I was getting at with Smile Squad is we would literally take the person who is acting in the video with us, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, what it's like to be Filipino. And we'd be like, tell us what it's like to be Filipino and let's write a funny skit about it. And they go, oh, yeah, this and this. I'm like, oh, what is that? Oh, you you take your shoes off before, that's a thing. And they're like, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you learn. So I learned so much about other cultures just by talking to these people. And you'd be surprised how much we have in common yeah. and just things are just done a little differently, but they mean the same thing, right? Like right. one thing here and this here are t done differently, but they both mean the exact same thing. So you can relate and you're like, oh, wow, we're not that much, you know, different. We're not that different from each other. And, uh, that was, I think, the best part to yeah. come down to like see the cultures without even having to go to that's the Philippines or I, I like they brought to me and they're like, here's the culture. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, so how do you go from being a professional influencer to and the happiest creator on earth? Where, like, what did you study in school in Colorado that led you to where you are now? Like, I'm really curious. Um, how, how this has kind of like developed in you. Yeah. Because, I mean, you don't strike me as someone that was like a hardcore AP biology major who was <laughs> going to, who was going to go into, you know, healthcare and then all of a sudden, um, you know, has millions of followers and make right. content for them and keeps everyone entertained and smiling all day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, the nicest way possible to tell me that I don't look like I'm smart. <laughs> no. No, no, you can, you can have a PhD. You can you can have a PhD, but I, I just and smiling. Yeah. I, no. no, but you don't. I mean, you could be a, you could be a doctor on the side. I, I don't know, but but I'm just I'm really curious, like how people end up where they are and Absolutely. what the, what that journey was. And I think anyone you talk to that is in a, a content creator, at least that in my opinion, because content has been so new, right? Over the past few years, it has it has swung up into a lifestyle, into a actual job, into a whatever. But because all of these people who are currently into it, anyone you ask, they fell into it. They just kind of fell into it. Yeah. And that's just how it has happened until kids now are like, I want to specifically grow up to be a YouTuber, right? It's yeah, this is, how, this is happening in schools, right? Like, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawier. I want to be a YouTuber. There are I want to be an Instagrammer. Yeah, yeah. I, I would think like, a creator or YouTuber is like the leading term. I haven't heard Instagrammer. I don't know who anyone who would just want to be an Instagrammer. <laughs> but, um, as far as my story, I grew up doing uh, musical theater in Colorado. Okay. That was the start. Uh, loved doing show choir. Uh, I was in choir in high school. I did all the all the musicals, all the plays, you name it. Like that, what I wanted to just perform and entertain people. See, that's huge because that links into what you do now so perfectly. Like you loved being on stage. Yeah. You loved being the center of attention. You loved entertaining people. <laughs> yes. And now you get to entertain millions of people. Yes. Instead of having them all fill, you know, sit in a room and watch you on stage. Right. Which it is great. And I would I, any opportunity to go back and do something on stage, like in the back of my mind, if Broadway emailed me and they're like, they've had celebrities, you know, do one-off roles on, on a Broadway show, you know, like, oh, Hugh Jackman in, in this show, like, but he's not doing it regularly, right? Like, I would love to do that. And I would, I would absolutely jump at keeping it in my back pocket on a rainy day. Let's go do a musical. Would love that. The live, there's something hugely spectacular about live performance. Like, I love it also, like, because of my television career in the adventure space, I ended up doing lots of speaking events, live events, corporate events all around the world. Um, and I, I tell you, I fell in love with it more than making television. Like standing up in front of a couple hundred people and having them all go and all like laughing and having fun and, you know, slapping each other on the shoulder yeah. and, and following along with you. Like that's the best. It's a feeling you can't 
even describe like it's it's you're just all there at, at, you're all there and you're all sharing the exact same moment at the exact same time. And the best part about theater is like live theater, personally, obviously, like like musicals. Yeah. Something goes wrong, you get to you get to experience that with the audience and you get to play off of that. And that audience gets that one moment with you because it's not gonna happen again if something goes wrong, right? Like it but it's just everything is so unique about live theater and entertaining people live and then getting to see them after the show or whatever like it is a cool feeling it's just fun right so what was your what was your favorite performance that you were involved in in in, uh, in high school uh okay so high school not only was i doing musical theater it wasn't just high school i was actually also in a nonprofit organization outside of school extracurricular that i would just go to it was a theater company so i did like over 30 shows with them oh alone. my god that's a lot yeah because high school was only one a year it was the, it was the spring musical and like that was it and then there was talent shows and then there was the plays so, so there you was... needed to be in like an accelerator where you were doing a lot more star and more independent yeah yeah i know that's amazing i needed more than just like the once a year musical or the once a year choir performance or whatever like i wanted to how can i get more and by going to this uh theater company uh i got to learn like on a regular basis right learn different types of dance styles uh like etc being in different plays and musicals there equipped me to then perform locally in denver paid right so i would audition and i would actually be hired for like a like as a kid like i'm in high school but i'm over here at the local like denver performing arts center as a like in the same position as grown adults and i'm this you know 17 year old kid with a part in greece as one of the T-Birds, and I get paid, and it's like, oh my God, I'm like, this is like, I'm a working actor. Like, as a, and I'm still in high school, I got school tomorrow. Like, you are, that's amazing. It is cool. So, so you're like 16 years old, you're in Denver, and mm -hmm. what, like, how supportive are your parents of musical theater? Are you finding all this stuff like on your own because you just love it? Right. So, no, family played a huge part. Uh, super grateful. Um, they, School was first, obviously. It was like, do you, you know, school. and then, But, like, absolutely, we love that. You, we love watching you perform. They would, my mom, number one fan. That's helpful, right? It's very. It's like, if you're terrible, we hate it, we hate it, we hate no, it. No, it, was, it wasn't not. I know some people out there, like, don't get support, and that's so frustrating uh, because support goes such a long way. And my mom, like, shout out mom and my dad. Um, my mom would, she's like, I uh, for the Grease example, right? I did Grease. And it was my first like big thing, like leading role. I was Roger, which was one of the T-Birds. In the musical version, he's much bigger than the movie, but he's the one who likes Jan, who likes the Twinkies. Okay. So that was my character in the show. And we had like 30 something odd performances of this show. My mom was at like 25 of them. Oh my God. And she- Fantastic. Yeah. And like the other five, she ushered the show, like she worked the show. Yeah. So she went- for so many of these, but then she works. So she, but I'm like, what are you like? When you've seen the show, she's like, I just like watching you. Oh, that's I'm like, I know, mom, yeah. I know. So she's the best. But yeah, um, it uh, it really went a long way, and school was still important. So acting was the dream. I wanted to be Jim Carrey. I wanted to be Robin Williams. I wanted to be, you know, film, TV. But that wasn't happening in Colorado. So the goal was graduate from high school, move to California pursue the dream of TV and film like yeah. every other actor got a serving job um you're not allowed to work in LA and let you start off as a waiter work as a waitress, waitress. <laughs> right? I think that's the key it, it's yeah. the personality it helps uh, make the money to support yourself and in uh, in 2024 the equivalent of that is a podcaster that's is that really well do you get tips that you're gonna ask me to tip you for this <laughs> tips no look the screen around just go ahead and fill this out for me just go ahead uh yeah and it was it was great um Transitioning to TV and film from theater was really difficult because out here in LA, they're like, "You're too musical theater. You're too energetic. You're too you can be too energetic." Yeah, I mean, well, for TV and film, it has to be like toned down and like more authentic and not like, you know, musical theater. Wow, look at this place! Like, no one does that on TV. And film. So that was because they're making the wrong TV. I know they should be made. They should and be writing something for you they specifically. Be <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, it was it was great. Um, they wanted me to go to college always because that was just how you're raised. It's like go to college, have a backup plan. What's your backup plan if, if film and TV doesn't work? They supported it, but it was like, what's the backup plan? And I was like, no backup plan. 
I was like, it's this or nothing else. I was like, I will serve tables the rest of my life and I will, I will, um, chase the dream. Sure. But I refuse to do anything else and not be happy. And so I think that's the key, isn't it? Like, I think if you have a backup plan, you always have a, you know, the second parachute you can pull. Like in- if there is a backup plan, you're already setting yourself up for failure for fail, not failure, but like you're, you're doubting yourself. And I, I refuse to believe that I needed a backup plan. It was like, I don't care how long it takes me. As long as I'm doing something, the thing that I love on a regular basis, that's winning. Yeah. You know, I'm not Brad Pitt. I'm not Leonardo DiCaprio, but I'm doing it and I'm, I'm supporting myself. Sure, I'm serving tables, but at least I still get to do this and not have to do anything else. And the difference between those who succeed and those who don't are those who quit. Sure. That's the difference. That's that's it. If you continue to do it, you're succeeding. If you if you're like eh, something else, well, then you've obviously given up. It's a, it's a, it's amazing how much just is is consistent action towards the goal, right? Like yeah. for me, for me, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I needed to get out of Canada um, or out of North America entirely. So for me, it was um, it was more of like a geographical situation where I just needed to like get out. So I went to China. Yeah. And didn't know what I wanted to do or where That's I crazy. wanted to do it, and That's I just, like just I a... just like figured it out. It's like same same like coming yeah. to LA, but it's a little bit of yeah. culture shock. Yeah, you. I mean, talk about throwing a dart board or a dart at a map and being like, "Where are we going?" Like, there's some TikTokers who do that, and they're crazy. I could, I, I need a little more structure or a game plan. I don't think I could just move somewhere and be like, "Let's figure." Well, I did. So I did. I did study like inter- introduction to Chinese uh, politics and everything like that in university. So okay. I had a background in China, but okay, I didn't speak good. Chinese. I didn't know anyone in China, and I didn't have a job. I just kind of showed up there, dang, with that's like ballsy. two grand in my pocket, and be like, okay, time to like start a new life. Wow. Yeah. See, that is that's that's pretty wild. Um, my like I said, I've all I'm very like. OCD in the fact of like, I want a plan or a structure or at least something to work off of, but I can't go into something blind. Uh, that's probably the, like, I mean, like just something I couldn't do. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I, I would, fi- I would go and do something like that, but I would have to plan X, Y, and Z before doing it. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, that does. It does. It's uh, it was terrifying. I, yeah, I would but, but. be surprised if you're like, yeah, I was totally fine. I'm not playing it cool. There were a lot of nights where I was like, I don't know if this is the right thing for me. But uh, yeah, you just kind of stick with it. I just knew I just knew I couldn't go back. Yeah, that I mean, that's kind of how things have been with like like we're talking like my career wise. Like I did TV and film and I did that consistently. I was going to school in Santa Monica and I did a year at Santa Monica City College and I was like, I don't need this. I don't I told my parents, I was like, I don't need to go to college mm. to do what I want to do. Why would I go to community college to transfer to a university to get my bachelor in fine arts of performing or whatever, even if I went to school and I had the training? The training, sure. All right. But that's four years of my life, right, to get four years for college. Yeah, four years plus the, well, two years of community college and then two years of, you know, whatever bachelor degree I wanted to get. Only to get an audition and go into the casting room, and let's say you have the Bachelor in Fine Arts from USC, and you were in the top classes, and, you know, whatever. You're decorated in all sorts of acting performances, whatever, and I'm over here working at Red Robin, and I walk into that audition, and I've got better hair. I'm going to get the part. Right. Like, that's how I was, I told my parents, I was like, I don't want to have student debt the rest of my life. That's the, that's the worst thing about higher education. Yeah, yeah, the student debt, and I, and especially for TV and film. Like I said, you're not walking into your audition holding your degree and being like, I'm an actor. No one gives a f- No one cares. Yeah. You could lie on your resume. Yeah. It, like, you can lie on your acting reel. You can, like, I'll tell you this. This is a little inside scoop for all of the all the actors out there. This is what I did um, before I fell into social media. Again, fell into social media. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that. The, uh, we'll get into that shortly. Yeah, the old the old acting reel. Uh, back in the day, I used to walk. This is when, before it was all submit online. Now you're like submitting your tapes online and you're submitting for casting calls online. I used to walk into places with my headshot. That's the old way, right? Shot at the Apple Store like Johnny Drama. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not that old. Yeah, but um, 
to just Entour- entourage is the reference for entourage. Every, every la life story that i come across I story about that love entourage um and to get the opportunity just by like you know hopefully getting a call by turning in your headshot but when it comes down to the uh real what i did is since i had a camera and i had some friends or whatever we would shoot our own like cinematic-esque scenes or whatever We'd write them out and we'd shoot them and, and I'd put them in my reel because we need footage, right? How can you get footage for your reel if you're not working or you're not getting like jobs? So I would, uh, when I graduated high school, I asked for a Mac. And, and, smart man, smart man, and a camera. And a camera. And a DSLR. Yeah, <laughs> and I used my graduation money for Final Cut and like all the editing software and I taught myself. I didn't take a class or anything. That's, taught, the, that's the passion though. I mean, that's taught like, myself to edit. You, you know? can, if you really love something, you can teach yourself how to do anything. Absolutely. Especially with YouTube nowadays, you can literally learn how to surgically remove someone's like heart <laughs> on YouTube. You're like, all right, wait and cut. Pause that. I had a, I had a pod, I had a guest a couple of days ago who uh, came in and, and like two days after the podcast, he's like, oh, can you just remove that little bit where I talked about this? And yeah, you can go in on YouTube and remove like a two second little clip. Uh, oh, that's uh, cool. of audio and then have it totally smoothed over and and it like it, it processes the whole thing wow. for you wow yeah like that's pretty rad after the fact editing is actually really easy on youtube huh yeah. well uh as was speaking of editing with my reel i took the footage that we would shoot and then i would go to google and i would type in like tbs png logo and I would take the TBS logo and I would drag it into the drag it into the lower corner of the clip. So when the producers or whoever the casting whatever people, these aren't like the direct you know, these are whoever's getting me in the room, right? right. When they're watching my reel, they go, oh, This was on TBS. Hmm. And it's like, you know what I mean? Like, who knows? And, and, I and no one no one questions that. Never. No one calls I you. Never wrong. questioned or called out once. It, I got in the room. I don't know if it was because of that, but that's something I did and I lied my ass off absolutely on my reels. To people get, people don't say you have to fake it till you make it. I, I mean they that's never been said. Who said that? I that's, that's, that's I've never heard that. That's the first time I I just came up with that right now. Absolutely. It's a genius. Um absolutely. I wouldn't say fake it, but I would say stretch the I would say uh, yeah, make. I would say put makeup on it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, make it. It was a real clip. It was a real scene. It just wasn't on TBS. <laughs> and that part can be blown over easily. That's no problem. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So take me back to uh, high school graduation. Okay. Denver, Colorado. Yeah. You've just graduated high school, and you're having the party at the end of high school mm-hmm. with all your friends around, and you're like, okay, guys, guys and gals, I'm going to LA. Wish yeah. me luck. I'm going to La La Land. Yeah. You, like, did you drive here in your parents' car? <laughs> it was my car. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was, it, it wasn't even just like a, I graduated and I'm telling everyone, everyone knew day one, I'm going, I'm, I'm like, that's the only thing. I was like, I'm going to be in movies. All, so it's like second grade. I'm like, I'm going to be in. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they was known. I'm Batman. Hey, Batman. It was, it was known that. When I graduated, I was going to California, and all the friends were down, and they're like sick, and they some of them road tripped with me to move my stuff. Oh, that's sweet. It was cool. Those are good friends. Yeah, it was cool. Great friends, and we drove my car out. We made it a thing. We stopped in Vegas, uh, even though we couldn't do anything. But it was like for her like, eighteen, and it stopped. That's in Vegas. right. Uh, drinking is twenty one in the U S. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In- Canadians are way more evolved. We 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 got eighteen year old. That's drink. probably why everyone's so happy and all the time. And so we uh. I moved out 2010 is when I graduated and I got to California um, and that was the start. And then, uh, you know, like I said, serving job and, and pers- I did the little roles, the little, the little jobs, the little back. I did background work for like six to eight months, like, you know, showing up on sets 6 a.m. and for Glee. <laughs> okay. Like shit like that. Yeah. And well, at least you found your high school musical uh, uh, crowd, right? I ended yeah. up in the same place I started. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I did background work for a minute, paid my dues, got an agent, started to get, like, the $100 featured roles, the 200 and so on and so forth, and worked my way up to national commercials. And I ended up, you know, through the five, after five years, from 2010 to 2015, wasn't a lot of traction. But in 15, I got my first, like, movie. Oh. And it was a 30-day filming experience. I was a legit role. It was a straight-to- 
video on demand. It wasn't like, you know, a theatrical movie theater release, but it was a straight to video on demand. And I was like, cool. And I got to shoot for 30 days as my role, which was great. And um, the job, the serving job at the time that I had didn't want to work with my, my shoot. So I quit. And like, I was like, how how shitty is that? Like you you, it was, you come out to L.A. right, and you, yeah. you have dreams of stardom, mm-hmm. and dreams as does of, every as as does everyone that comes. Yeah. And then you know the serving job is like no, you need to choose between serving and being in a movie. It was it was uh yeah it was unfortunate, and it you know after though after um the movie was over uh this is when the whole recession happened. This was like Obama era, like when the it was like sixteen to the movie was in fifteen. Right, but then like it was around that time period, and I couldn't get a job after the movie. The movie paid all right, but it wasn't like I wasn't rolling in it. No, um, most people just think you do one movie a year and you can live, but yeah. actually, there's no no way. Like, if you're Brad Pitt, sure, but the rest of actors are just yeah, you know, no, maybe I don't month know, at best. or two months, depending on the movie or the production company or what you whatever. Yeah, but. It was very hard to find work after that and uh, couldn't get a serving job. So I actually resulted to dancing on Hollywood Boulevard dressed as Spider-Man. Full Spider-Man okay. suit. Wow. Uh, taking pictures of people. It was like, you know, you got the characters out on Hollywood Boulevard. And, the, and it's such a bad rap because a lot of them like rob people, like straight up rob people. I, I, you can see that terrible. being a bad it's bad. It's terrible. Yeah, they have fanny packs and they're like, oh, yeah, I want a photo with my Party City Spider-Man suit. You know, he's got like a beer gut or whatever. And they're like, yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. And then they just like $20. And I'm like, what? The, I, I did not believe in that. Like mm-hmm. I was going to go out there and earn the money that I and perform as Spider-Man. No fanny pack, legit Spider-Man suit. Performer till death. And perform till I die. <laughs> right. Uh, hanging upside down on the street posts, everything. And I made a good, like I'd make like 150, 200 bucks a day cash. Wow. So I did that for a few months. Then I got to tell the IRS. <laughs> Shout out IRS. Gotcha. It was gifted. So I don't have to. Gif- gifted it was, is the key. It was idea. gifted. Yeah. It was gifted money. Um, and I did that and, and I and I loved it um, for the time that I did. It was like part of the thing. And I it worked. How how long did you have to work in L.A. taking bit pieces and doing your own thing mm-hmm. before you had an agent? Uh, let's see. I got an agent pretty early on, actually, but it took me, I would say, to get, like, something good going, probably, like, at least a year. And was the agent the gatekeeper to better work, or was it just someone there to, like, you know, keep in your pocket? It was helpful. Having an agent was helpful. Uh, There was also, this was the time when the internet broke into self-submitting online, so I would, like, submit myself project after project. So more, I was doing, in addition to what my agent was you know, the agent was like, I'll get you in the doors for big things. But, like, I was looking for the $200 a day jobs, the this job, like, you know, the... Well, the, the agent commission on $200 a day doesn't pay for the parking in right. his Mercedes or Ferrari or whatever he right. or she is his driving, right? So exactly. They're, they're trying to hit home things. runs. They're trying yeah. to hit home runs. Right. So they would do that, and I would do the, you know, grunt work of trying to get myself just resume stuff, you yeah. know, like, and, and also reoccurring paychecks or whatever I could. And so that's where a lot of... I actually booked myself more stuff than my agent because of that, because they were all the lower end stuff. But he did get me some big things in the door for some big things, um, <clears throat> which after that movie, um, everything snowballed. That was when things really kind of picked up after this. It was like movie dances as Spider-Man and then things started to like, well, progress. Well, the thing is that you shoot the movie, right? Mm-hmm. And you get paid. Right. But then it's like six, eight, 12 months until the movie comes out. Right, and so that wasn't even relevant. I forgot about yeah, the movie because then you can't even <laughs> because you can't even market uh-huh. that you've been in the movie. You can't use the footage. You can't use the yeah. footage to show people how great you are. Right uh, until it comes out. So yeah, there's like a I always call it, it's like the desert period. Like mm-hmm. like especially when you're just starting out. Like if you if you've got tons of movies or tons of TV shows, people can always pick and choose. But when right. you do that first one, mm-hmm. waiting until people can actually see it so that you can book something else, yeah, is the worst period of time in your life. It's uh, it was yeah, it was. My agent, well, the one thing that he said that will always stick to me is just, <clears throat> you do the audition, you leave, you forget about it. You do the job, you have fun, you leave, you forget about it. And it's just the next day. Monday to Tuesday, or like, you know what I mean? Like, you do something amazing on Monday, Tuesday, it's just 
you, not, like it's a new day. So that has always been something relevant as far as like you leave it in the room. I would go audition and then I would leave and I'm like, cool, what else? let's go get some lunch. And then like I would forget about it. And then because if, if you, you carry that with you, you're just yeah, you're just mentally weighing yourself like, oh, my God, am I going to get called for this? For this audition, am I going to get the job? Like, I'm really, I'm waiting by the phone. I would just, no, I just, mm, mm, well, oh, well. <laughs> like, like who cares? And then I would be pleasantly surprised when he'd be like, hey, by the way, you booked it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing how, uh, if you're in the entertainment industry, how much of being booked for something or getting a commission for something uh, depends on just how much people like you. Like, because, yeah. like, everyone is kind of at a similar talent level in in some cases, everyone can perform and be directed to a certain extent. To a certain extent, right? You know, and then it, and then at the end of the day, it's just like you know whether you you like someone or they like you, and whether they think you can work together. And and when who you, get, you know is crucial. Um, it's like never rung truer. Like they always people are all, you know outside of everyone outside of Hollywood is like it's all about who you know. It is very heavily weighed on who you know, and if you don't know someone, it's who your agent knows. Oh yeah, I know these casting directors. They're gonna bring you in, because the casting directors don't even necessarily have anything to do with the movie immediately. Sometimes they just are. They organize like the the business that you go to, right? Like they're the people in charge of bringing the actors based off of the profiles or whatever they're looking for, and then you go audition for the producers. So the casting directors are the people you have to like be friends with. They're the gatekeepers. They're the gatekeepers. Yeah. Yeah. No. And uh, that literally, what you said is who you know, and that that goes very far. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, what I was saying, uh, I want to go back a bit. What I was saying was, it's amazing um, how much of your success in this creative field depends on who you know and how people like you and how people perceive you. Yeah. So that when you don't book a job and when you don't get something, it can really eat on you because then it's like, oh, that person didn't like me. Right. It has nothing to do with your talent. But sure. if, if your talent is already at a certain level, then it's really about personal relationships. Right. Then when people don't like you, that hurts. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, no, it's, I've, you take 50 no's for every one yes. Like that's the ratio. And uh, that was just the lifestyle. And I did that. Like I said, when everything started to snowball, uh, things got, you know, once I got some credibility, it was like, boom, boom, boom. It was like five national commercials web series for three seasons Man. and then it was guest star on nickelodeon so it was like oh wow like i'm a working actor now still serving tables right on the side even with all that still serving tables got to play it smart you know but serve tables total for seven years all through my everything that i had booked and i had a great great experience with tv and film mm -hmm. with commercials and guest star roles and it, everything it was amazing and then I found social media, and I just started to post videos and more and more. Fell into social and media. I fell into it as it became more prominent. I just did it. I was like, "Yeah, I'll post a video on Instagram once a week. Yeah, why not? Like, let's. Uh, uh, it'll keep my acting skills sharp, right? Right. I'll post some stuff on YouTube. But like, I, I already knew I like missed the Vine train, right? Like, there was people getting very famous on Vine, right? Which I don't even remember Vine. What? Yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. Vine. Um, Vine is the six second TikTok. I remember that. Yeah. Okay, now I remember that. I think I, I was in I was in China when when that came out. I never, never made it to China to make a good video and lots of like some I'm friends with like big Viner that were big Viners now, which is crazy to me because I was like watching them on Vine, but now I'm like, oh, I got his number. I'm like that's cool. But uh, it, yeah, that I missed that train. I was serving tables. I was trying to support myself. I didn't have time to commit to like get into like how these guys were doing it i don't know like i don't know how they were living to be honest but they they were grinding and they were doing it i find it i find it really interesting because i find um like when you first came to la you seemed very focused on pursuing a traditional entertainment path mm -hmm. like going to auditions getting an agent trying to book gigs yep. hustling waiting tables but the skill set that you show now for the social media content that you make, the mm -hmm. great stories that you make. Like your videos are hilarious. I was on your YouTube channel this morning. I appreciate it. You're bouncing around, you're cutting, you're shooting yourself, you're editing. I can tell like it's your passion, right? Yeah. Like you love it. I love it. And you're happy and your, your cuts are hilarious and the way you, you know, you use everything like, and it's very jumpy, like everything's moving quickly. Thank you're, you. And I appreciate it. But that's a totally different skill set 
Very than nice. acting and going to auditions because yeah. you're coming up with the concept yourself. You're writing it. You know, you're figuring out the camera angles. You're moving tripods. Then you're going into final cut. You're doing it all yourself. Yep. You're adding some music. Yep. And then you add sound then effects. Yeah. Sound sound yep. effects. I don't. Yeah. Don't mean to lessen it. I know. No. 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 And then, and then it's posting, and then and then building your audience, and then connecting with them, and chatting with them, and replying to comments, and yep. all it's this a stuff. Time thing. It is a twenty-five-seven. Like twenty-five-eight. It. Yeah. It is. Di- people in different time zones commenting. It is. Yeah. It's sharing. It's it's staying relevant with trends. Like not even just trends. Like oh, I better go do this dance like everyone's doing, but like trending topics, making videos about those topics, um, relatability. Yeah like understanding not only your audience but like world audience etc uh and editing and everything like i don't have an editor i don't have like i don't have anything like i have my friends who um help me shoot my videos when it's when it's like my pov videos um with the zooms and whatnot but like on my phone i'll shoot everything myself on a tripod or sure or whatnot um yeah editing everything and posting and then on to the next like just like i said like go in an audition do an audition leave it in the room edit a video post it on it what's next i don't even dwell like i don't even like i'm just like well it's up cool great and then i'll reply to comments like when i'm bored or downtime or whatever sure uh that's a super healthy way to think about it because, yeah or else you're just in it all the time and then you just never get out right yeah you just start you're staring at your phone like every five seconds of every day I'm you're making staring at my phone miserable. but not because of replying or any like looking like i'm not like number watching i don't like view watch right like i can generally tell how a video is gonna do within like the first hour and i'm like oh sick if it like does start to pop off then i'm like ooh, i should fuel this fire and be engaged more in the comments or whatever and monitor it that way but if it's just performing as normal i'm like oh cool great people this is doing good like and that's it yeah um but i'm also simultaneously posting it on all four platforms four different times not all on the same day at some time. So it's like that on top of everything else, which is also like adding to the uh, the to-do list, I guess you can say. Yeah, and it's a whole business strategy. Mm-hmm. And it's a whole, and like people, I don't think enough people really understand like how well thought out your day and your strategy. Oh, no. Ha- no, they watch the video and they're like, this is dumb. <laughs> yeah, and, and, then, <laughs> and then they, and they just, move on. Yeah, yeah. Like six hours of my life that went into that, like to... You know, sometimes it's that's what we creators always say that you'll put so much time and energy and effort into one video, six hours of shooting it or costumes or editing, whatever, and it will tank. And then you'll come up with a video in 20 minutes and you'll do that video and it will just like there's skyrocket. There's no rhyme or reason. You'll get like 20,000 followers from that 20 second video that took you no thought at all. But the one that you put hours and money and energy into people are like, yeah, this is this didn't hit. I'm like, oh. The the one that uh, makes me laugh the most is um is your one where the Disney characters running on a treadmill. Okay, yeah, uh, big one. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough one. Like obviously you're running on a treadmill, uh, and then you bring out uh, you know uh, the uh, Toy Story characters. Yep. You've yep. got you've yep. got the Aladdin carpet at one stage. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I I find like stuff like that's just hilarious. Heck, I, yeah. I, of course, like you put some time and energy into it. You had to get the costumes. Yeah. You had to give it some thought. Yeah. But that, that stuff's fantastic. It's, I appreciate it's hugely it. entertaining. That was um I. I always tell my friends, like, it's one thing to be a, you know, like creators who you're on TikTok or you're on Instagram and you see people making videos of like you things you've seen before. You're like, oh, I've seen this, but it's interpreted differently. This creator did it differently, but kind of the same joke or kind of the same vibe. But you've seen it. Mm. You know what I mean? You've seen this joke. I'm not a recreator. I am a creator. I don't want to recreate something that's been done. I want my videos... In my mind, this is how I carry myself. I wake up and I'm like, I want to make a video that's so good that someone else wants to steal. I want Lad Bible. I want BuzzFeed to steal my video and put it on their page. Yep. Like, I want it to show up everywhere. That, to me, is validating that I made a good video. And that's exactly what I try to do every single video and innovate with, like, the treadmill. I don't know how, like, I'm like, no one's done this. Like, it was it was fantastic. I really loved it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I did it three more times, or two more times. I did Star Wars and horror characters on the treadmill. I haven't seen the Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got to I gotta check that one out. That's good. But uh, I was listening to an interview with Mr. Beast the other day, and he said kind of the same thing, and I think it's a really healthy attitude. He's like, 
I just make what's in my head. And if people want to copy it afterwards, that means I made something that's quite good. Like, yeah. Because that's like the best form of appreciation is when people copy yeah. your work, right? Exactly. And as long as as long as you can have a clean conscience and say, yeah, I came up with that on my own. I, I'm all, I look at it as inspiration. Yeah. If I can do, make a video like the treadmill, it's actually really funny. No one has really copied the treadmill, which. Well, it looked tough. I mean, the, the t running, running in Disney co costumes did not look easy. It was a, uh, it was no joke. Um, I mean, what, what kind of insurance are you on? I mean, it one fall there and you're in the hospital. Zero insurance. <laughs> America, no insurance here. Um, it's, uh. Yeah, it's it's cool to see that like it was just so well received, obviously, um, but not. But it was like, oh wow, no one even tried to rip it off or anything in any way. It was like interesting, but uh, I don't know. I guess that it, it if they did, if someone did rip it off and they did something in the same fashion or whatever, I inspired that and I'm cool with that because it's not like we don't watch movies or TV or stand up comedians, listen to music or whatever, and get inspired by those things. Yeah. So what's the difference? It's like we're using things all the time. We're constantly consuming. And so I just consume, consume, consume and like melting pot my ideas and then try to produce something new, original, which is tough sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'll admit I've done videos that are in line with the same genre of joke, but I definitely make sure I don't try to shoot something that has been done before, like at least in any way, like in the way, you know what I mean? Maybe a topic. I've done a video about my mom moms be like how many moms be like videos are out there like a million but how i did it was a little different so it's i try to just do that to my best the best of my ability when i can and how much does your mom love being in your content because she's been your she's been your biggest fan since day one baby it's really funny she is always like you're always just, just so embarrassed like i just get so embarrassed I'm like mom people love you more than me like people love my mom and she she knows it. I know she, like, she doesn't dislike, she's not like, oh my God, I don't want to do this or whatever. She's like, all right, fine. I'm like, you know it. You know this video is going to be hilarious and you're going to have fun. And then when you're going to read the comments, you're going to ask me how it's doing, et cetera. And she, she secretly loves it and she kills it every time. Every video that I've put my mom in has just been massively successful. It's, and it's secret her. weapon. Your secret it, weapon. It literally, it's all her. I have the idea, but it's people love her. And that is no surprise because she is a national treasure. And next week on the show, is, on the show. Uh, is Kurt's mom. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so let's take this back. Um, you got a breakthrough movie. You danced as Spider-Man in Hollywood. Uh, and then you went on a great run. National commercials, yeah. booked a television series. You were, you were rocking and rolling. Yeah. So what made you fall into social media at that time when things were, were from the outside looking in, yeah. going quite well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, it was kind of a, a, how do I explain? Let's see. So I had all, I had everything on my plate. I was like, all right, acting's going good. It's it, it was an ayahuasca vision. <laughs> yeah, it was like an epiphany. <laughs> um, everything was going great. And, and, and again, keep in mind, these are all in like far, few and far between. Like, you know, it wasn't like, one week, one week, one week, it was like one thing this month. And then two months later, it was like, oh, big thing. And it was like, oh, another thing. But it wasn't consistent. There's so much downtime in our oh, business. It's it's terrifying. Way too much. That's on As an aside, that's actually why I started doing this. Because I was traveling the world, doing all these adventures and everything like that. And the downtime was crushing. Yeah. Because we had to go and raise money. We had to do post-production. We yeah. had to prepare physically, you know, climb mountains, all that kind of stuff. And the downtime... I was just doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I should be talking to people, making friends, like, you know, yeah. connecting, making content. Occupy your, yeah. Yeah, and it, it was, it was the downtime just killed me. Um, yeah. And so I was just like, I'm just going to chat with people and keep myself busy and have a good time and, and just, like, have great conversations with amazing people. It's, yeah, super smart. Yeah. Uh, do what you love, like, and exploit what you love to do and, like, how, like, take advantage of that. And when it came to making content, I had already been making like videos once a week. Um, I actually did videos with my cat, like just for fun. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's low hanging fruit though, because cats are fucking amazing. They're great. They're fantastic. <laughs> they're like, oh, but I, little did I know how great it would be on social media, how great cats would be on social media, right? And so. Did you hear the story about the YouTube guy? Yes. Which one? Uh, the founders, uh, the guys that created YouTube, uh, Chad and um, what's his face? So the YouTube 
popularity. He he was um, there was this is going to sound terrible. Uh, Chad and the other guy, who was a white guy and an Asian guy. Okay. I can't remember their names. I apologize to everyone for not remembering their names. But I remember they sold YouTube to Google for like I, a billion dollars. Yes, I remember the the merger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and uh, the Asian founder, whose name I can't recall, I think Chad was the white guy. The Asian guy said, uh, like, what can you can, what can you attribute to YouTube's early successes? And he literally said, like, it was because I was just filming my cat bored at home. And he's like, and then, but YouTube really got started with cat videos. You're right. Yeah. You're, yeah, the dun, 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 the cat piano. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, yeah. And I, I was like, well, I'll make videos with my cat. So I was making funny videos and I would always call it like if, when your cat is your roommate or whatever, because my cat's very vocal. What, so, what's your cat's name? Zeus. Zeus. Orange Tabby. Orange Tabby, and he's like the complete opposite of his strong demeanor name. It's very like now he's more fitting to his name because he's like 13, so he's old and senior, and he's like, I'm over it. But when he was younger, year two years old, you got this powerful name and this like just doinky cat, like yelling at me all the time. I would film his meows and frame it or whatever, and I make a storyline around it, and then they would just, I'd post them as skits. And those did well, and they got the attention of, like, Cats of Instagram and Nine Gag and Meowed, and they wanted to share my videos. And I was like, yeah, sure, I've got no followers on Instagram. And then I gained more and more and more, did that consistently while still acting, make a video once a week, stay true to that. And then, fast forward, uh, 2017, I went viral with Zeus for dancing with him. I you were, you were dancing with your I, cat. I was dancing with my cat. It was a one off. It was one of those one off twenty second videos. It wasn't even intentional. I was hopped up on pre workout, about to go to the gym, playing music in my room, and uh, my cat was just sitting there on the floor looking up at me. I was like jumping around my room, uh, and I reached down. I grab his paws, as you do, as I as you do, and I, he's standing on his hind legs, and I'm just like doing this, and then he jumps i don't know if he was thinking to jump into my arms but he just elevates and then i'm like what the? and i was like oh and then i did and next thing i know we're both jumping and i stopped for a second and then my roommate's like yo dude i gotta film this this is hilarious and so he films it i do it again we're jumping around my room to oh my the god music. that's hilarious well what what was playing what was the tune uh tsunami it was dun 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 like it's just us and i'm a gif yeah. now him and i literally you can search rave cat or dancing cat or or my name or whatever and you see us dancing in my room as a gif and people and that just exploded paris hilton shared it david Guetta put it on his thing he put a song and put it like it was everywhere this overnight like i had lad bible calling me and they're like we want to license your video and i was like what is happening with it this is my first ever viral like thing and but this is while you were still acting like this was your this was 17 this was your like downtime yeah literally literally and even then it was still no like oh i should do social media it was just like oh cool a video popped off it got my facebook a little traction it got my instagram a little traction and i always stuck with it i'm gonna make videos every week so that was 2017 Now fast forward to 2019. A content creator, uh, his name's Markian, Markian Benamu, he had this team called Smile Squad. And by team, it was him and an an editor and his writer, and it was just him, and he would make relatable skits, what it's like to have an annoying sister. How great unknown timing was that to start up like a an online social media he fell into it business plan in 2019 right before we all get locked down and are doing nothing but staring at our phones crazy crazy and so he didn't start it in 19 he was actually doing it i think in like early 18 he was oh uh he didn't start it in 19 i don't know if we missed that he didn't start it in 19 it was like early 18 he was going to usc for business he was trying to just have a business degree well he he had a backup plan <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even a backup plan. He fell into it. He massively fell into it because he was doing it for a side group, like just to make, like, do something else, make a video, or go, go like a project, side project, not even intending. And he posted it on Facebook and it just exploded. Like 
huge, like like 80, 80 plus million views on like, and he just took off. And he was like on Facebook. On Facebook. That that's a that's a good way to date yourself. Crazy. Well, but he was even younger than me. But he was just posting on Facebook, and so he was doing this regularly. And he wanted to expand, so he wanted to find another creator. Enter me. He found my cat videos. As we all did. As we all did. <laughs> and he's like, hey, we should meet for coffee. And, and I was like, and at the time, he was reaching out, uh, this guy messaging me. I'm like, why is this guy with three and a half million followers hitting me up? That's crazy. And I was like, but sure, yeah, I'll meet with him. Why not? It might be another acting job. might be a one-off video. I'll go shoot a video. I'll go do a few episodes or whatever. And you didn't have a fucking Zoom call with him. And I did. You went and met him face to face and built a creative partnership that changed your life. Yes. Yeah. Uh, literally, we met for coffee, and he was like, "You know, we should make a we should make a video." And I was like, "Sure, why not?" And he's like, "All right, you come up with a concept of whatever you want to do." Oh, that's heavy lifting. Write some jokes, whatever you want, and we'll put it in the video. We'll shoot it. We'll put it on my page. And I'm like, "Sounds great." So what did I do? I took all of my cat videos and I culminated them into one mega cat video. Oh my God, that's so smart. And it was <laughs> when, it's when your friend is obsessed with cats. And that was the video. And it had 20 different examples, scenarios of what it's like being obsessed with a cat. We posted it on this page and it did 10 million views in like two and a half days. Hold on one sec. I'm just going to go out and get all my cat videos off my phone and go. post them right after this conversation. Yeah, yeah literally. 20 million. Uh, over 10. Over 10 and million within, views. Within three days. And then it just kept climbing from then. Uh, do you want me to look up what it's at right now? Yeah, yeah. Look it up where it's at. Right Let's now. see what it's at right now. And that was back in the day. This is your this is your camera, by the way. So if you Got want to show that. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be hilarious. Obsessed with cats. Obsessed with cats. All right. So that video is currently at, at the top here. There we go. There you are. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I'll read it out. Oh, wow. 30 million, 30 million views. And what is that on uh, YouTube? That's on Facebook. That's on Facebook. It's on Facebook. 30 million views. 30, on Facebook. 30 million on Facebook. And so that, uh, that was our, my first like video with him. And from then on, he was like, do you want to do another video? And I was like, yep. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's yep. do it. Every, yep. Can you imagine just cranking him out and doing 30 million at a time? I, it wasn't 30 million every video, but yes, it was like his tra his Facebook was also pushing his page, like Meta was pushing his page because it was the new Facebook watch. It was, they wanted to inspire Facebook creators to compete with YouTube. That was the thing. How much, so this is, this is really actually very interesting. Like how much of these people, these creators, mm -hmm. these storytellers, these um, celebrities, how much of their early success is built behind just the platform being like, well, these are the guys we're going to push. I have no idea. Because that, that secret sauce yeah. is the difference between life and death. It's There are definitely those who are in the gray area who are just the undiscovered or the ones who the platform didn't push. I wasn't pushed by any platform like immediately like that. Like in that sense, I was on that team, but my individual thing wasn't being you know, like that. So I had to like literally while working with Smile Squad, everything was going to that page. I simultaneously posted one video a week to my page because I was being tagged in all the Smile Squad stuff. But when people would go to my page, I didn't want them to find no content. So I made my own POVs, not not anything that we were doing over here, but my own style of videos over here at the same time. So when people would watch this, they go, oh, Kurt, oh, they go to his page. Oh, let's follow Kurt. He does his own content. It's completely separate from Smile Squad. So I gave them something to see when they got there. And what, what, how, how do you deal with that pressure to create? Or does it just come naturally? So we just love it anyways. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. I wanted to just be greedy as far as the workload. I wanted more. I would shoot with Smile Squad during the week. Uh, like three or four videos, and then I would shoot one of mine. So I would edit my own. I didn't have to edit the Smile Squad videos. I, we gave them to an editor. But my videos, I had to. So I would shoot for Smile Squad right. three times a week, and then do my own on like a Saturday, and then edit it and post it by the next like Thursday. And were you getting paid for the Smile Squad work, or were yeah. you guys getting kick at kickbacks like based on viewership? It was a little of both. At the beginning, when it was just Mark Ian and I, he wanted to pay me, and I said no. I said I don't want our I don't want our relationship to be based off of money. 
I don't need a few hundred bucks for being in your videos. I don't just a lifetime supply of cat food. Just and you'll a be lifetime fine. Lifetime supply of cat food, and I will be. Yeah. Um, I told him I was like, I don't want this relationship to be formatted off of a monetary basis. I just want to show up and make videos. I, I just want to have fun. Like, and I was still serving tables at this time. So this was like, were you still doing auditions at this time? Or were you still like trying to push this part of your career as well? Uh, it was, it was like, if they come great, but I wasn't actively, I was kind of like, ah, oh, this is something new. Let's explore this. Like, why not? Uh, and that was around May of 2019 is when I met him. This April, is April of 2019. This is interesting because like from, from again, from the outside looking in, like I see you coming to LA and having to rely on other people. Mm -hmm. to meet the casting directors, meet the directors, book an, you know, get an agent, book a deal. Like, and that's part of the frustrating thing in this town is like, you're always relying on other people to connect the dots or to get you yeah. through the door. Yeah. But with social media, you're entirely in charge of it on your own. You're, you, you set your own schedule, you shoot what you want to shoot, you write what you want to write. If you, one day you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like filming, you don't have to film. You know, the next day you can post something random and it does well. Like, you are you are you know judge and jury you know of the and entire process of the entire process yeah it's the, it's so it's it amazing. makes so much sense that you fell into this mm -hmm. while also kind of doing the other thing but maybe being less fulfilled by it or just having like a, a lull in in that part of it yeah you i couldn't have said it better myself that's exactly why i strayed away from TV and film is because of the independence, the freedom, the I'm my own boss. I don't have to show up to set at 6 a.m. to leave at 10 p.m. to have a 14 hour day on set. I don't have to wait for $200 for $200 I, for and IMDb credit okay, and credits. Um, I didn't Those have, IMDb credits are worth it. Though. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Huge. What's your what's your IMDb uh, ranking at the moment? Uh. I don't know. It's been a minute since I've looked at it. I was under like ten thousand at one point, which was cool. But I don't know what it's at now. I could, I could, I don't know. You, I, all I care about is that you Google me and it says YouTuber now, which is way cooler there than you go. it says Kurtazi, American YouTuber. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> way it. cool. But we, it was just me and Markia in May of nineteen, and we made videos and we were killing it. And then he was like. By VidCon, VidCon is like the creator WrestleMania. Okay, hold on, but bring this back. So uh, I know Comic Con, San Diego, yep. where everyone yep. goes to see like Star Wars exactly. and all that kind of stuff. Okay, but content creators, YouTubers, TikTokers, big your biggest social media names are at VidCon. Mr. Beast. Yeah. You, there's panels you can attend. Is that in Vegas or in LA? It's in Anaheim. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, there's one in Anaheim, and then there's also one that takes place in Baltimore. I think each year it's. East and West Coast one. Baltimore's terrifying. I've never been. Oh my god! I've never been to Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, I went there once by accident, and I'll never, I'll never, oh boy. I'll never sleep well again. Oh boy! Yeah, um, yeah. And so VidCon was like the thing. It's like the thing for creators, right? You go, you get to meet fans, you get to you speak on panels. It's like the showcase, um, the culmination of your social media career in one like weekend. And so, Markian brings me to VidCon. He's a featured creator he's on a panel he's got his face on a 20 foot billboard like it's crazy that's all that matters is the bill all that matters i was like do you get to take that home <laughs> because if so i want one one day if you if you take it home though where do you put it? i don't care like a 20 foot like I it doesn't even put it in my head. house <laughs> i'd put it over my house i don't care i'd put it on my driveway i don't know and so we go to vidcon and then it's great i get to just kind of lollygag around while he's doing all the important stuff. I'm not in any of the panels. I'm just his guest. Mm. So I'm I'm just freelancing through VidCon. And after, we're driving back, and he goes, how would you like to be a full-time creator on my page? And I'm like, I've already been doing that. What do you mean? Like, I'm in, I've been in your videos. He's like, well, yeah. But how do you want to, like, do... Because every all up until now, I've been, like, driving to his place to be in the videos with other actors. And, like, it would be us two as the guy, the main guys and someone else. He's like, no, no, no. How would you want to do what I've been doing but at your house? We can double our output. You'll have an actor come to your house. You'll make all the same kind of stuff that I would be also making. And we would be able to pump more content out on a regular basis. And I'm like, cool. 
Yeah. What is that? Divide and conquer, baby. Divide and conquer. And he's like, yeah, I'll pay you. And then I can actually pay you. We'll do a contract. What do you think? When we talked about what a contract should look like, et cetera. And from that moment, I was like, this is it. I was like, I'm going to have like a reoccur, like this, like once we talk to numbers and stuff about what the income versus, you know, output, et cetera, I was like, I don't need to do TV and film anymore. I was like, this is going to pay me more than a reoccurring role on a TV show would. That's amazing. And does that also mean that you don't have to wait tables as well? So like you're- it also meant that I did not have to wait tables, but I still waited. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll do it I, from August is when I went independent from like where I started having people at my place. And this is August, 2019. Correct. Okay. August of 19, I went solo, but I was still in small school, obviously. But like I was creating and he was creating, it was just us two, August of 19. And I did that. Uh, and then between August and December of 19, we found two more creators to expand our team even more. And you doubled down. And we doubled down and we made, we trained that I trained them. He trained them how to work the camera, how to interact, how to write the scripts, everything, the whole, we had a structure, everything. Do you remember what kind of gear you were using back in 2019? The same, same, same stuff today. Just phones and maybe like oh, a gimbal or anything like that? No, it was a Canon. Okay. 6D Mark II DSLR. Rode microphone and a tripod. I love those shotgun microphones, just You're right so off the top. Yeah, we, so great. we use those. We use those on the on the like extreme trekking and climbing videos yeah, as well. Yeah, with the little like, dead cat on the, top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, it was great. We we trained them, and Sam, the guy from a brother's the brother's son, now on Netflix. Everyone go watch Sam. Um, he was. I helped literally decide on him joining the team. It was like we auditioned. We we like they had to improvise with me in real time because a lot of our skits were you had to be upbeat you had to be think on your feet like could we change a scene this way could we make it funnier this way whatever i don't like, i don't see you as a guy sitting in the in the shadows in the corner you know, crying like, looking out the window markeen was on the on the computer and he's like all right so you got this because markeen was very introverted right. and i was very extroverted so we were a good combo of people i would a great team i would do all of the anything advertise like anything advertising anything like energy wise and he would be the he's very business minded very smart guy Obviously, look what he built. And Sam came in. The second I auditioned with Sam, I was like, Tim, like, what do I mean to see anyone else? I was like, is that guy? And he's like, you sure? And I was like, I'm dead ass sure is this guy. And he did. Sam came in, rushed it, did exactly what I did. All of our videos, we were cranking out 200 plus million views a month on Facebook. Hold on. Take a take. Between all those videos. So you guys were making, what, one or two videos a week? Each. Or we were each filming three two to to four videos depending on the week yeah. two to four videos a week so between three like each each so 12 plus videos were being filmed a week and then five were being posted and you guys were doing 200 million views plus 200 million views. on facebook uh, on facebook alone not counting youtube right just on facebook monetized and what does that what does that bring in financially yeah so it can depend on the cpm it, it international cpm was where a lot of our audience was filipino like big philippines audience but we had and well this is good because the smile um mm -hmm. the smile thing would have given them a whole nother audience that they wouldn't even expected right because right. you're making u.s content with people in la and all of a sudden you have right. the smile squad and you're getting the, all this the, asian uh, stuff yes his audience well because marketing was from spain originally yeah. but he just naturally found an international audience just when he when he found me the three and a half million majority of that was international whether it's india philippines asia whatever like it was all there he had a very small u.s audience but when it comes to revenue the international cpm is not as high so you don't get as much for your ads as you would a u.s audience yeah um but nonetheless 200 million views even at a low cpm is good money the best i remember I don't remember the monthly, like, the every month, because that wasn't really my concern. Right. Um, but I remember I asked him, I was like, what is the best month ever you've had with Smile Squad, period? And he goes, I cleared 360000 in a month. 360000 on U.S. Just dollars on in Facebook, one month. Just on Facebook. For 200 million views. That was probably more than 200 million. It was probably like, that was probably like 250 or so-ish, 300 million maybe even. Uh, it was his best month he had ever had, um, but that's just on Facebook, not counting YouTube revenue, not counting. That's amazing. It's God. crazy. I'm I'm really curious, and I actually think like the platforms are not forthcoming enough about some of this. Totally about how much 
money actually goes out to creators. Because I think if they were yeah. more forthcoming mm -hmm. and more transparent, they'd probably get more people doing it and higher quality people doing it. It depends. It's very wishy-washy with these platforms. They're all trying to compete with paying their creators like YouTube Shorts and TikTok now and, and Facebook as well. Like it just depends on the platform and they're all trying to like pay their creators or convince them as you know what i mean that's the biggest thing right now well currently the, well the, the the thing about youtube that i noticed recently is um is you can sign up for what like youtube red or youtube pro where it's like 16 it. bucks a month to skip so how much of that 16 bucks goes to creators I, that's what i, I want to know i have no idea as a creator i have no idea all i know is i post a video and i make ad revenue off of it and the cpm is such wherever it whatever it depends on and that's it or based off of the views as well like if a short does really well you're going to make more money um but right now surprisingly enough tiktok is paying the most no really because before it was paying absolutely nothing bless you oh excuse me bless you um but yeah right now tiktok is paying the absolute most per single video than any other platform which is crazy and what is it about TikTok that's so so financially more viable than Facebook or YouTube? It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me either as to why it is the way it is. TikTok obviously has more users, uh, like daily users uh, and views, etc., cetera, um, which justifies the ads that are on it. Um, but I couldn't tell you why, but I'm not questioning it because it's crushing it. Like, create like... It's it's shocking, like honestly, how the difference between uh, the income, the revenue that YouTube puts out, which is still great, versus Facebook. Facebook has a lot of incentives to make a lot of money, but like it's not guaranteed. You have to like hit these thresholds in order to unlock this much money, etc. It's they made it like a video game. Kind of, yeah, yeah, like literally. Uh, and then TikTok is based off performance. It has to do well in order to make the, that good money associated with it, but it's there. And it's like, I feel like it's easier to obtain, at least for me currently, it's it's the easiest revenue to obtain currently. This is really, this is really interesting because, you know, okay, go back like 10 plus years, right? Do you remember Saturday Night Live? Of course. Back yeah. in the day. Yeah. I mean, I grew up yeah. with Saturday Night Live. Um, and then I remember like uh, Jimmy Fallon and and uh, Justin Timberlake started doing all these digital shorts. Yeah. Like, it's my dick in a box. Dick in a box. Yeah. All the good, all the best ones. Um and then I believe like then people started putting that stuff on social media and yeah. that like that started to be like a trend of like, oh, we can create real skits and real scenes and create real characters and put them online because yeah. Jimmy and, and, and uh, Justin are doing it like yeah. on we can every, every Saturday. Let's parody this. And that all happened like mid teens. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then, and then you start seeing like really like finished quality stuff on mm -hmm. like YouTube and, mm -hmm. and Facebook and everything like that. And then. But then TikTok comes around and just blows it all out of the water with just shorter, faster, shorter, faster, shorter, faster yeah. somehow and just collecting all the eyeballs. Yeah, because you can go from one thing to the next. YouTube, it's like watch a video. All right, scroll, scroll, scroll. What's next? Find something else. What's, what's you know, you have to kind of do a little more searching. But then TikTok innovated the just swipe up. You got something brand new, yeah. brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new. Next thing you know, like you're scrolling for an hour and a half. Uh, of all a no, melting pot of content which is a crazy out, like format to be able to like present in the groundbreaking it, it broke everything as opposed to like facebook again is one-off videos it would have to, you'd have to follow a page to see their next video smile squad you have to follow our page instagram you have to subscribe or subscribe you have to follow someone on instagram to see their posts tiktok you don't even have to follow anyone you go on the for you page and it's a melting pot of all the best performing videos because you have to follow anyway. Because your phone has been listening to you for the last five days yeah. and you know exactly what you want to see, exactly what you want to buy, exactly what kind of partner you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. That's terrifying. That's terrifying to it's me. It's pretty scary. It's 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 I, I don't like to think about it like in that aspect. It, but I mean, I can, there's nothing I can do to change it, like I or to stop it from doing its thing, and I'm just exploiting it. More power to you, but more, more power. More power. Whatever I can do to uh, continue to entertain people, if I got to use this platform and you know, whatever trend I can make a video off of, and if that's being talked about, and it's gonna be, you know what I mean? Like, if I can do that, great. And so now, like you were talking about earlier, COVID. 
Smile Squad from we, we, we're all kind of caught up. Smile Squad has like a lot of great like I'm making money. I'm still serving tables. It's end of 2019, and then and something strange was going on in China that no one was talking about. Nothing weird was happening, <laughs> and then fast forward, COVID hits. And it's the worst time in the world to be a human and the best time to be a creator ever, like in the history of ever. How much, how much, how much of where you are right now can you attribute to that 2020 COVID pump? Yeah, a, a, a massive boost. Here's the thing. It's, a, it's both. Yes, it absolutely sent me for, well, I'll tell you like what, what it was, but there were a lot of people that were sent during COVID. It's how you followed the boost you had to you couldn't have just been a flash in a pan there were a lot of people who hit during covid but then like they kind of fizzled out because they didn't follow it up they didn't stay consistent they didn't you know they were like kind of like one hit wonders or they didn't treat it like a business no they did yeah. it like oh it's just 2020 and they were big in 2020 there was a lot of people who were massive in 2020 but now now that things are kind of mellowing out it's really separating you know those who succeeded and those who just popped off for a moment okay and so when it comes to COVID, uh, Smile Squad's great. We're doing we're doing great, and then like every out views, just everything just skyrocketed. But I posted a video again, as I do, like in addition to Smile Squad, that wasn't Smile Squad, called Disney characters in quarantine. I haven't seen this yet. I'm sorry, I haven't gotten okay. deep enough into your page. It's okay. Yeah. It's an old one. It's from 2020. I gotta watch it though. It was it was one of my founding cornerstones of putting me on the map and the day I post it was it was what is it like what are the Disney characters doing inside quarantine because everyone's in quarantine and this was March when did I post this March 30th I believe yeah so we were like two weeks in by then mm -hmm. yeah and I do you remember when they were just like oh it's just another two weeks oh it's just another two weeks oh, yeah. it's just another two weeks <laughs> yeah yes and I exploited 2020 massively for everything that was happening on uh, news. Well done and to you. Everything. I, I took full advantage. And uh, I made Disney characters in quarantine. And what I did is I took every notable Disney song, because I can sing. I do musical theater. I grew up doing Disney. I know all the Disney songs. I know all the Disney characters, etc. So I dressed up like them, and I did vignettes, little scenelets of each character's iconic song, but I changed the lyrics to... COVID related lyrics. You weird Al Yankovic did. I did. Yes, I'm a modern day weird Al. Yes, I literally parodied because there's no one doing that. Like no one's doing parody music since Weird Al. Literally, no. I, there's he, no. He started it and broke it. Yeah, he's he's, he's the best. Did you see that movie with uh, that biopic that uh, with uh, um, it's uh, called uh, with Daniel Radcliffe, yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I, I was like, oh. You know, we always walk around our house and we just make up lyrics. We, you know, make it up. That's like what I do. I just joke around and I'm like, oh, this is, there's something here. And so I wrote just the chorus of each popular song and had an outfit associated with it. Wigs, low budget outfit. It wasn't like, it was like the quarantine budget. So like Gaston, I had, you know, a red t-shirt with, uh, what is it called? Um, dish washing like Your gloves dishwasher gloves yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah. yeah whatever you could get on amazon literally, in the moment literally yeah. amazon was clutch as hell and that company didn't do well at all they during COVID. They, they've i feel so bad for jeff bezos some days it's <laughs> it's been it's been tough jeff i'm sorry they you've had a rough COVID. yeah yeah and um I, I yeah i put it on i put it on facebook was the first place i posted it and march uh march 30th on facebook i had just hit I was at like 140,000 followers on Facebook from Smile Squad, respectively. Right. From them tagging me, I'd gotten about 140,000. And then on Instagram, the day I posted it, the same day, 100,000 followers. I just hit 100,000. I was like, cool. It's my 100,000 follower celebration. And on YouTube, I was at like 20,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. I guess. I post Disney Quarantine, and it does 60 million views in less than two days. Hold on. Across all platforms, 60 on million, oh, just on Facebook. Just on Facebook. 60 million views. In less than two and a half days. My following on Facebook quadrupled in four days. I was pushing north of 600,000 followers on Facebook 
by the end of the week. And those are fully engaged, like, rah, rah, we yep. fucking love like, you whole, followers. Like, what is this video? This is the best thing I've seen. This is COVID-related. It's hilarious. It's uplifting at a time like this because it's not a fun situation, but he's having fun and it's making us laugh through this weird, strange time. Everyone needs that. Everyone needs it. Was, it was something that I was like, Disney fun singing i'm embarrassing myself and it's covid related and it's shitting on covid mm. so it was like poking fun at covid being a thing but also the seriousness of it but it was like disney lyrics but i was singing it so it was like the first opening shot is it was a parody with an underlying of truth yeah yeah the first opening shot was me as rafiki okay even though he doesn't sing it in The Lion King, I just chose to be as Rafiki because it was a Lion King character. I have a blonde wig on, face paint, no shirt, and I'm holding a broom, and I'm on my patio. So I pop up, and I go, Nah, Corona, keeping me stuck inside. When will this go all away? Like, and that's just the opening line. I just want to watch you keep singing, actually. That was fantastic. That was, <laughs> that was, I was, to be loud. That was beautiful. That was that lovely. lovely. And then it cuts to the next best thing that I could think of that everyone would instantly know is uh, Beauty and the Beast, which is Gaston and LeFou. And the funny part is this one scene was the whole reason the video happened because I was scrolling and I came across a meme and it was Gaston with a face mask and gloves holding Clorox and it says, no one cleans like Gaston or in teens like Gaston. It was just a meme. Yeah. And I saw that, and I was like, I could sing that. Light bulbs went off. I you were ready. I turned this meme into a real-life scenario, so I copied that meme. I still, to this day, do not know who made that meme, and I posted it in the top comments, like, this entire video is inspired by this meme. Whoever made it, thank you, because they're the whole reason for I, that. I love that, actually. I think, I every, I think everyone should be like, this video was, was created because yep. i was inspired by this random thing i found yeah who made it who's out there what's know. going on no one no one reached out to you i still don't and then even if someone did like say i made this how, how am i gonna know you know like it's a meme there's like i don't know if like you hit me up and like i made that i'm like all right well how do i know this but regardless i posted it i was like credit where credit is due the whole gaston sequence was because of this meme but i built seven other characters around that format of turning COVID lyrics into Disney songs. That's no small task. It was. It, That's no small tough. task. It took me a few days for like, you know, to culminate all of them and perfect them. But it was great. And the and by the end, well, currently, Disney Quarantine now currently sits at 82 million views. I love, the, I love that you know that right away. It's on my wall. It's on my, it hasn't really, it's kind of plateaued obviously now because it, it doesn't go up anymore. But I, you know how like, vocal artists take their record their platinum records and they hang it on the wall yeah i screenshotted the video right like the like when you're looking at the feed and i blew it up and it's on my wall that's fantastic like, it's, yeah. just, it's just the thumbnail like with the views and the shares a million shares like i was like this is what put me here and it's that and it's just hanging on my wall i think facebook should give you like some kind of trophy facebook. or some kind of plaque uh, for that right Facebook doesn't give awards youtube does it and i've always called i actually just hit a million subscribers in October, and I got my plaque finally. Congratulations what, for that! A you. million views, a million, and a million followers. Subscribers, subscribers, yeah. That's that's a which is the mass. hardest to obtain on YouTube. Yeah. One of the hardest platforms to hit a million on, and I was like, yes, like, and I just hit that, right? So like, even I hit a million on Facebook in twenty by end of twenty twenty one twenty twenty one. I hit a million on Facebook, uh, de literally December thirtieth. Right before New Year's, uh, hit a million on Facebook. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I ended up doing, now we're in COVID era. I was on the news in Australia, in China, in New Zealand. About fucking time. Yeah, right? Right. Uh, Yahoo News, people, if Ellen DeGeneres was doing the show during 2020, I would have been on it. But it, I didn't. Right. Because it wasn't a thing. It wasn't, everything was shut down. I did KTLA <laughs> like they're like guy makes Disney video and well let's go and I zoomed them obviously it was a zoom interview yeah uh and after Disney quarantine um uh after that video popped off remember I did a video every single week so I was like well next week we're doing part two and so I literally after I posted that I was like I instantly jumped on Amazon I was like gotta write a part two and so I would you were just looking for costumes on Amazon like not, what can I not even costumes low budget 
color coordinated because I wanted it to look like quarantine. I didn't want to do the actual costume and make it look legit. I wanted it to be like I threw these outfits together from what I had in my closet. So it was budget quarantine. Yeah, it was quarantine. It was because thrift thrift shop quarantine. Yeah, it was the color of the character with a wig yeah. maybe and then a few accessories depending. Like Moana, I had a big, like I did Moana and I took a red shirt and I like pulled it through like, you know, like yeah. a belly shirt and then I had a pillowcase as a skirt. Yeah, well played, well played. And, yeah, yeah. and then no. I had like uh, beads, like a bead necklace with a cat perler on the end of it. Like it's just a cat, it's stupid. But it's like gave this the vibe. Yeah. And so I tried to hit that. Like Lumiere, I wore a long sleeve yellow shirt and I held two paper towel rolls and I set them on fire for his candlesticks. And okay. that was Lumiere. So it was like everything was low budget and I did three parts of Disney Quarantine. Mm -hmm. Obviously the first one did the best. The second one did great. Not anywhere close to the first one. But they all did great in their own right. Multi-million views on all three of them on every platform. Amazing which is great, on YouTube and Facebook, and then also on Instagram, they did well. And then following Disney Quarantine, I milked the whole 2020 thing. I did Halloween in 2020. I did Christmas in 2020. I did, uh, like, moms during Thanksgiving in 2020. Like, everything 2020 was just everything I could possibly do because I was like, this might be the only year that it might be relevant. Right. So I just just dumped content out like it was no one's business. And then when things got back to normal, I proceeded to transition into the normal content, like, you know, uh, like my girlfriend with plants be like very generic, but like I'm making fun of my girlfriend and the things or et cetera. And that's what I've been doing to this day is I've now transitioned into the normal content from the COVID content. How, how good do you feel about, about getting into social media in a big way in 2019 and dedicating yourself to it in a way that very few people have and then and then and then having the set of circumstances that came about play in your favor while you're already in this zone of creating content regularly posting it connecting with your audience like you already had um you know you you were already kind of well entrenched and yeah. in a great position to exploit everyone Smile just stuck at home in the position smile yeah. squad got me in the door and then i entered the the door and i poured gasoline on the fire yeah. like had i not like i said like with sam right sam's a great example he lands brother's son on netflix but that's not because of smile squad that's because of his his hard work and acting and he stayed true he always wanted to do tv and film so he was doing that on the side with smile squad I would love to chat with him someday about how he started doing Smile Squad with you, and now he's oh, yeah. Man, now he's damn, I gotta get you on this, bro. He's, no, it's be, he's that's going building. crazy right now with brother, son promotion, all that stuff. So he's a wild, busy man. His whole life has changed. Yeah, like his life changed, like my life changed with brother, son. He's on Netflix show. Like this is season one. They're probably gonna pick it up for multiple seasons. His life is now right. But as far as how I feel, I am still dumbfounded to this day that this is my life that I get to make videos for a living that I can actually just wake up shoot whatever I want post it and it makes me money that's crazy and I continue to progress my brand my business and model that as such as how I can expand and for example a great testament to that in the quality of my content and that I believe in myself and that I like always try to like better my content what can i do to make it better whether it's an edit whether it's an idea whatever in 2022 uh in brand deals when i started to get my own brand deals yeah away from smile squad because like they were only they're all mine now um i was like all right i'm gonna adventure into the brand deal world but i don't want to just look like a human billboard i, I don't want to just take every brand that's thrown to me i have to either like the brand, sure. like connect with it, something. Because I want. It's either that, or you have to wear one of those like F one jackets with all the right. all the logos on. Right, like a race car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to. I, I only wanted to go into working with brands that I personally believed in, or that I could. Like when my audience watched me do a video about it, like, oh yeah, he this this is believable. It's not just shoveling dog shit and whatever their call to action is for their campaign. He's not just saying what they're telling him to say. I refuse to do that. I was like, I will make a good video. If I can, and I can work with this brand and make money, great. In 2022, I get so many advertisements or requests for supplements. I can't stand them. I, I, I don't I have to. Supplements. No, 
Yeah, I think it's the outdoor adventure guy kind. Oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah, true. That's what do you use? What helps you climb mountains better? Yeah. <laughs> like being left alone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, and twenty twenty two, the first year, like my solo year, I guess you can say, away from Smile Squad, just fully solo. This is you stepping had, away from that. Your career has a bit of a boy band arc. Like very. You, yeah, you you kind of like you know you joined in with the Backstreet Boys or something, and, and, then, you, and then you it. left. You yeah. left one day. I just I just finished the Robbie Williams documentary. Oh yeah, no, it's great. The Backstreet Boys and the In Sync one, like, or the what is it? Um, about their manager. Yeah, it was great, like a crazy that you learn some of this stuff. Or the Britney Spears one as well. Like oh, the, the Britney Spears one was terrifying. But the Robbie Williams ones was quite nice because yeah. he was with uh, Take That. Yeah, and, he, and then he broke away and had his soul. Is that career. on Hulu or is that on Netflix? I think it's on Netflix. Okay, okay. yeah, I I think I know what you're talking about. Mm. Um. Sorry to interrupt. No, I mean, just no. everything you say, I, I'm just this high value. It is a hundred of things. That, yeah, no, least. you're very on par. Like people have said that, are like, oh yeah, you, you were you were the Justin of the In Sync, and I was like, stop. You broke away. You broke away. Yeah. And it worked. Uh, right. Oh, but this is what I was saying about Sam is that like he was on Smile Squad, so it wasn't just Smile Squad that blasted me off. I had to put in extra effort, but Sam wasn't really doing as much social media because he was doing TV and film, mm. and rightfully so. Look where it got him, but. Where I put my effort, it helped me take off with social media. And he didn't, so he didn't take off on social media. It wasn't just Smile Squad that did it. I had to put in so much extra work with the videos and Disney Quarantine and follow up. All right, what's next? What's after Disney Quarantine? What's after that one? What's after that one? Et cetera. So in 2022, my first ever solo year, I do $68,000 in brand deals through the whole year. That's that's fantastic. That's, that's, a, that's a huge amount of money. It was amazing. And I wasn't even, I was trying... I, I'm not trying to be my my my. What I told my friends I was like, I try to be what I say is the cheapest gas in town. Other creators, I'm reading, I'm reading like blogs or I'm reading articles, and they're like, creators asking ten thousand dollars per one post, and I'm like, are you on drugs? That's crazy. Like that's so much. That's nuts. They're never gonna want to work with you again. They're never go like, and if they do, unless you're like massive, sure. Unless you're literally David Dobrik. Or Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. I heard she gets like a couple hundred thousand dollars for one. Probably gets like half a million for a post. She's yeah. Unless you're literally someone like that. But as your average creator, if you over ask, you're gonna either scare the brand away, and they're gonna be like, "Oh, he's way too expensive for us." But imagine like working with their budget, and in, I I've raised my rates like over time. But like I would work with brands' budgets depending on how adamant I was about their concept or their brand or whatever it is. And I would be the cheapest gas in town. And they keep coming back. So I get the same brand 10 times as opposed to once for a good chunk of money. But now I've made, I've surpassed that chunk of money because I've worked with them seven times. Well, that's a real blue collar mentality. Like you're bringing, you know, you're bringing the hard work ethic yeah. and your ability and they to recognize. plan and manage and yeah. then promote and get it out into the world instead of being like a one hit wonder. Yeah, you're a grinder. They, I am, I am, I am the definition of like hustle and grind for sure. And they recognize the quality and they want to come back and work with me again. I'm like, great, let's do it. Love to see you again. Like, love to work with you again. Yeah. And I did that. And over time, I have raised my rates as my following has grown, but not just because I felt like it. Like my following grows. Oh, I feel like my I could add a little more value with with my brand deals, but now... And do you just come up with those numbers on yourself or is there some kind of like yeah, expected, no... kind of accepted, you know, yeah. uh, Bible right. Bible for this kind of like, there's how do I talk to a brand? There's nothing to really go off of. Like there's no standard. Mm -hmm. Everyone makes their own like thing. But like I said, the articles I've read, I was like, oh, I don't want to be that. Yeah. Like followers, people with this many followers are asking this much. I do not, like that's way too much. There's no way they're getting that consistently. There's no way brands are paying them that that regularly unless they are massive names, sure. right? In which even then, I don't see a lot of my massive name friends. Like I consider myself like I'm like semi pro. I'm in the I'm in the semi pro leagues. I'm not LeBron James, you know, but I'm also not a you know I'm not undrafted. You're not an unknown quantity. I'm not an unknown. I'm 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 right there in the middle. I'm I'm a good. I'm consistently making a living. I'm doing brand deals regularly, uh, and I'm making money off my content and. This is interesting for me. So on a on a given year, uh -huh. uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but like content creators like yourself, you guys will have a cost per click revenue. Yes. And then you'll have on top of that or on side of that, you also have brand deals. Correct. So when you put up a video that gets 20 million views, uh -huh. you're going to get paid something for those 20 million views. But if that video 
also has you wearing a specific sneaker or a specific sports drink. Brand. If it's a, with a brand deal, then you're also getting paid for promoting that in the video. So you're getting two incomes in one video. It is that, depends. Does that... It depends. Sometimes we, when you toggle on the paid partnership on the thing, the video won't be monetized because you're making the money from that video. Oh, they don't let you double dip? It depends. It, it depends. Like I said, it depends. Right. It's very, it's very contingent. I have on some, but on others I have not because it's a, a paid. This is it. This is this. You're getting paid for this. So, it, it just depends on. I don't know how to like explain it, but sometimes I have made extra money on top of the brand deals, but other times I have not. But, but what I was gonna say earlier is that I have now unlocked a new format of how for this past year. That, I, that works. Everyone get your pencils out. I'm going to teach you how to make money. Okay. If you're creators. Yeah. So, so you buy, and what you do is you buy a printer that prints okay. money. Yes. They, you can get this in DC off the back of the Fed. Mm -hmm. Make sure you do both sides. Both sides. Uh, and so here's what I did. In 2022, I just let brands reach out to me. If they emailed me, great, or whatever. And I would be like, oh, it's this much for a post. And I would do it. And that's it. Right. And then I got smarter. And I was like, I need to stop treating my pages like individual brand deals or whatever the brands like. We want an Instagram post. We want a TikTok or we want one video, whatever. Now I have four platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. All with different rates. No. All one rate. Kind of. Kind of. And here's, and here's what I say. It's not about the platforms because I have four platforms, all of which I'm pretty well established on. 1.7 million on TikTok, 1.6 million on Facebook, uh, 1 million, 1 1.1 or 1. Point, yeah, 1.1 1 .1 on YouTube, and then Instagram I have 505,000. Okay, so a decent following. Sometimes you're really big on TikTok, but some of these big TikTokers only have a few hundred thousand followers on Instagram. The, the conversion is, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the conversion across social media platforms is is tough. Is tough. Like so, a for a people... TikToker to have a million subscribers on YouTube is probably not likely. Like yeah. it's. So the, it's not there, especially on Facebook. 90% of the creators I talk to, they're like, I don't go on Facebook. I was like, you should. Well, Listen out. a lot of people don't know that like, you know, those platforms are so specific the way content is presented that it, if you're not actually making content specifically for that platform to, to catch that platform, uh, algorithm, audience, whatever, like whatever's, whatever's popular on YouTube might not necessarily make it to TikTok. Sure. And that's a great point. But. I would this this conversation is not TikTokable. It is. <laughs> it's. I would also. I would also disagree only because it is possible. Because I. Yes, you're right. There are some videos that will perform better on YouTube that would better perform on, that don't perform on TikTok and vice versa. But it is possible to post all of those videos across the platforms, and I try to get people to follow me for me and my energy, and not like, oh, he makes the good dance videos oh he makes the good disney videos it's like no no no. i want people to follow me for what i do and so no matter what i post yeah. on any platform they will enjoy it because it's me but there has to be an entry point right there has to be that Always point where, where someone clicks into something you've done that first thing that catches them and yeah. that's like that's the sure. key and then you gotta sure. and then you gotta keep them yeah and it's the hook and, and that's the premise of the video and that all goes you know number a big umbrella as to how it'll perform etc but then we're talking what my what I changed in 2023 for brands. And I went from just letting them be like, we want a video. And I'm like, oh, here's my rate Boop, for that video on Instagram. Now they'll come to me and they're like, we want a 60 or 40 to 60 second video uh, posted to TikTok. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, here are my rates or here's how my rate breakdown works. For one video, it's X amount of dollars. And then or I'm saying, but, or if you were, excuse me, let me restart. For one video posted to any of my one platforms, it is X amount of dollars. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, you choose, whatever. It's this much. For one video posted to any two of my platforms, it's this. It's, a, it's, a, it's an upgrade to a large for 49 cents more. It's not, it's not like double the price of the rate. It's like half, but at, like the half of it added. Yeah. For one video posted to three, it's this much. Or you can bundle all four platforms for one video and it's this lump sum. And they go, or, and then I also put in brackets or X amount per post. Right. So they they start to see, oh, it's 
this much per post as opposed to if we only did one, we're paying that much per one post, but we're getting four posts for this much per post. Mm, we should probably pay him all of this money. And now I'm treating like real estate. Yeah. So I'm treating my platforms like real estate and brands are like, ooh, yeah, you've got good followings on all those. We would love to do three platforms. And then I sell one rate. Well, it's a different rate, like, but one video, just for one video. That's not even multiple videos. It's one video posted to, which is no effort to me, but to just go post it on a different platform. And then that's how I made, I increased my, uh, that's how I leveled up my brand deal income. That's fantastic. That's super smart. Because if you're, if you're offering two or three platforms, but you're not charging them two or three X, you're giving them a discount for coming through the front door instead of going out and finding someone else. And now you're, now you're expanding your revenue. Right. But, and again, not having to do the, the hard laid work because well, you've already done the hard leg work and built up those, those yeah. brands and those, those, those yeah. real estate. The platform. Properties. Yeah. It's your, pro your properties. Yeah. yeah. And so they, they'll, uh, they'll be like, great. We'd love to do one video. And they're like, oh, what about two videos? And then now we're talking like, okay, well, we're going to either talk like double the amount of this that's when it starts to double because it's still two entities like they want one video posted to one platform and another video posted to another platform two different videos it would then double the rate and not counting i also add on the on the back end after they read through that and the bundle options i also charge for usage internal and or commercial whatever they want to do with it it's a usage rate so whitelisting sometimes they want to whitelist the video and put money behind it and like oh we also want to whitelist this and so when people are scrolling on instagram it will show up as like a paid a pay promotion like yes. so you're boosting it you're boosting they are uh, boosting it they, okay they're boosting they are i have to do i give them like a code and they're able to do it on their end like i i verify the the video for ads whatever and they can do it on tiktok Whatever platform it's on, I give it permission to be boosted with ads. So they'll pay you, like, for example, hypothetically, yeah. they'll pay you like $1,000 for a video to do something there, and then they'll put another $1,000 onto the actual platform to, to promote it, to enhance yes. the viewership across it. Correct. It's okay. one thing. So first of all, the rate, when they pay me the rate, it's to be posted to the platform. Mm -hmm. with my, And I make it. I make the video start to finish, whatever, and they approve it, and then we post it, campaign, hashtags, whatever you want. And then if they want to put money behind it or whitelist it or promote it, there is a usage fee that I add on top of that. I'm like, because they're going to use it. I, I had a, I did a Febreze one. Uh, uh, Febreze the, the, the aerosol. Aerosol yeah. can, yeah, yeah. For pets. It was Febreze Pet Air. Oh, I need some of that, actually. Do you have great. any extra cans? I do have a few cans. <laughs> I know, I know a company. <laughs> and so they uh, I did a deal with them, and they wanted to utilize it as a commercial, not on TV, but on YouTube. They wanted to like, oh, we're also going to use this as promotion. I'm like, sure. And I was like, well, you're going to pay me for the rate, and then you're also going to pay me to use it for a year. You can use it as much as you want. Hell, you could throw it on TV if you want, if if they wanted to, but they didn't. They put it on YouTube. Um, and uh, I that was an additional rate for that. So I always include that in my in my rates. So if they're like, oh, if we do want to whitelist, it's going to cost us even more. And that's a whitelisting for a one year term. Correct. I give them for one year. I was like, whatever. Because honestly, to me, it doesn't matter. Like, it's more exposure, but I'm giving them a year of time to do whatever they want with it. Like, that's like, and I feel that's on top of the rate I'm already being paid, that it was a fair, it's not crazy. It's uh, um, to a crazy ad. It's not like I'm like $10,000 for usage. Like, it's not like that. No. I don't nickel and dime, you know, brands. I, I work with them. And sometimes I've changed my rates because they're like, we're going to be honest. We love working with you but our budget doesn't come anywhere close. And I was like, okay, what are you thinking? And then they're like this. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I think we can do that. Let's do it. Like, I like the idea. I like you guys. You've been nice. And I handle all my own brand deals, emails. I don't have a manager. I don't have an agent. I don't have a PR. I don't got nothing. So to anyone out there watching, you can do exactly what I'm doing with no help. Absolutely by yourself. That's incredible. I don't, I don't, I don't, have, I don't have anyone, uh, no middleman that I have to pay out. So it's 100% possible to do it by yourself. Um, uh, just with consistency and like just take in just being smart with your you know decisions and not being crazy greedy but you know knowing your value as well as a creator how how important is consistency i mean like i just find so many people will do something for a month or two and then just stop because they don't hit you know sure. a certain level of, of yeah. perceived success early yeah i mean how i mean you want to talk how important is consistency you don't get in shape if you don't go to the gym yeah. You go to the gym for a month, you're going to feel good for a month. But then after that, 
it's all going down the drain. Like you're still going to feel like shit. You're still going to feel like dog shit. And if you stay consistent, you're going to get that six pack. You're going to get that, you know, in shape that you wanted to be. But like that's This is such an LA conversation. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to get those lip injectors. You're going to get that booty lift, whatever you feel. You're going to get that jawline. Um, I, consistency is the most important thing. He's staying like quote unquote relevant, right? Like yeah. to stay consistent, you want to be in people's faces. But I personally, like, we'll take Instagram for example. I only post twice a week on Instagram because Instagram audiences are a different breed of people and they get annoyed very quickly, right? Like they're just a different generation. TikTok, like I said, following doesn't matter. It's on the For You page. Mm-hmm. Post a video every single day because. If it's great, it'll end up on the For You page and whatever. But on Instagram, you're clogging people's feeds. Follow you, right? And if I post three videos, four videos in a week, and they're saying, oh, God, all I see is Kurt's videos. I hate how many times he posts. Stop. I'm not seeing any of my other friends' videos. So I do that on purpose because I want the video to have a little chance to grow a little bit. If I post on a Tuesday and then I immediately post on a Wednesday. That video on Tuesday has now just been undermined and pushed down the feed by my newest video. And it's just gone. It's hurting, only hurting myself. So I let that video grow for a little bit, and then I post again a few days later. So uh, Facebook, again, I also only post a few days a week, um, but YouTube Shorts and TikTok every single day. That's amazing. So That's amazing. it just depends on the platform. But For, for this, I'm trying to post um, like twice a week. Cause Is the- this on YouTube? This is on YouTube, okay. but then across all the all the regular podcast platforms. So mm. what I do is I take this video from our cameras here, and then um, and then I run that through YouTube, and right. then I pull the audio, and that goes out through the audio channels like, like Spotify, uh, Spotify Apple, Apple Play, Play, nice uh, Player FM, cool iHeartRadio, like nice. all the others, and then it, so you get and there's an aggregator that does this. So you just you you just post it once, and then you hit send. Nice. It goes out into the ether, and you're. That's God. great, but the but the best audiences by far YouTube and the most engaged audiences by far YouTube because then on YouTube people can comment right like yeah. on Apple Podcasts they can hear it you know right. when they're driving or whatever but they they'll comment they in engage. their car right, exactly. they'll engage in their car and they'll they'll tell you how they feel and creator that he interviewed the other day that bastard who's that happiest creator on earth asshole guy she's I hope I never see him and they'll probably I just wanted to ask you what your diet was I mean what are you eating to be this happy. Yeah. yeah. Uh I and it's been it's been it's been crazy. Uh like I said I still I'm very much in line. Like I'm I'm on the older side of creators. Most creators now they're like 20 to 23 to 25k. I'm 33 in July. Are you getting some ageism out of this? Or are you it's getting ageism? Some... This is some ageism. No, but I I'm, I'm looked at as like I look young, right? Like I get it. I I get that I have a young appearance. But nonetheless, like in the space of all of these young TikTok kids and everyone who has a head start, I guess, I'm on the older end of the spectrum, but I like that. I like that I'm here. I am like that I did not find success too young because my who I was when I was 22, 23, 24, I was like, I got this figured out. I know exactly everything, la, la, la. But now I'm like, I know I'm, I'm an adult. I, I'm well aware of decisions, financial decisions. Like I'm smart about my my videos i'm not reckless i'm not petty i'm not you know i'm not out there starting drama i stay in my lane and i do what i love and it has worked out for me and it's still how much do you think the brands appreciate that sorry to interrupt you how much do you think the how much do you think the brands appreciate that you are like a seasoned veteran uh i i would hope they appreciate it i mean it's not something i try to like get praise on i just like i said i exude the energy to people around me and surrounding me and however they interpret that I hope I leave it's not about what people think about me right like I I I could care less what people think about me but the most important thing is how you make someone else feel like I think that is more important and that goes much further than like oh what do they think about me it's like no but how did I make them feel while talking to me while being around me whether emailing me how did I make that person feel and I if think if they leave with something like wow he's like really nice guy really nice guy in his emails he's always he's always like super i respond quickly to emails like as quick as i can and they're like wow hey re- i always get the appreciate the quick response and i'm like hey yeah no I, I, of course i don't like you're you're here for me this is work yeah i'm working work. yeah i'm i'm going to give you a quick re- who isn't who's out there giving you 3 day re- 
<laughs> Probably someone with a manager who was taking uh, the Nike, middleman time. Nike just wrote me. I'll get back to them on uh, Monday or Tuesday. I'll let uh, him hang for a little bit in the. In the <laughs> I'll leave him. I'll let him sweat. No, yeah. They just canceled their deal with Tiger, so they must be calling. They're looking. They're for calling. New, yeah, yeah, exactly. Looking for a new rep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I can, I can wear red. Yeah, this is this is orange today, but I can go red if you needed. Can pull off red. I feel like you just. Uh, I um, I actually do um another thing. Actually, this is a shout out to my uh my old agent here in L.A. What he used to do, to um the casting directors, uh after a good year, you know he I, he they would get me he would they would get me in the door the casting directors, for a lot of great opportunities, and he would send them little things little little thank yous like at the end of the year like a card and like a you know a bottle of wine or something. he would like send them something hey thanks for a great year whatever like to keep those relationships right that's quite nice it's nice yeah really and he was genuine about it he's like hey these these casting directors did a lot for you like let's send them something let's let's do something nice for them they they got you in a lot of doors you know we want to appreciate their job and i'm like and give it and give a little back yeah like, it's a I, I think that's yeah. the thing like it's a creative community yes and no one goes forward without a group of people, you know, supporting and making that happen. Anyone listening to this, if you are in the network marketing field, if you are the ones behind the computers, if you're the ones dealing with the brands, the third-party marketing agencies, you are the unsung heroes that do not get enough praise. Like, you don't. Like, the brands reach out to them. They're like, here's our budget. Find these creators. Give us content. And yeah. the and the marketing agencies have to do that. And there are people, uh, teams of people who are so great and they email back and forth with me, et cetera. And so I, the ones who regularly hit me up, whether it's for a PR box, they've sent me 20, 30 PR boxes throughout the year. I see you do the the, the openings and stuff yeah. like that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. My PR box. Yeah, yeah. So much fun. And, but they, they but uh, they send them to me. Yeah. And so I would not have those without those people. And so um, at the end of each year, I send my contacts a bunch of, stuff i just spoil them i've there's a guy uh these are the rubber gloves that i wore in the first disney <laughs> covid yeah yeah sign them and then Nothing like that maybe frame them and yeah oh like, come on i can actually enjoy not my signed garbage uh, props um uh there's a guy in new jersey his name's scott scott shout out scott you're the man uh and I've never even met him in person. He he works for a third party company. Those are the best business relationships. Yeah, he's just purely email and social media. Uh, he follows me on Instagram. Really great guy. Uh, and he like I did some kind of bat like I did some digging as to who he is as a person. I googled him and looked him up, and whatever. And he has like a blog, and he is also like a writer. But he's in this network marketing field. I sent him a Lego typewriter for the end of the year. I was like, thanks for being awesome. I was like, I hope you like. <laughs> this typewriter he's like dude this is amazing That's so i didn't even ask him but i was like it's just doing things like that for the people who are actively helping you you know it's not all about me i wouldn't be here without all of these things whether the brands or etc the people uh helping liaison that so sure yeah sure let's just go back a second sure. so we were talking about um income and revenue mm -hmm. so on a yearly basis, what is the breakdown, just percentage wise, mm -hmm. between your brands and, and revenue and brands and, and streaming or streaming rec, click uh, cost per click uh, sure. or cost cost per you view revenue? Ads or yeah, anything. yeah, exactly. Uh, great question. Uh, and it changes honestly. Um, that's that's surprising it's actually. Pretty, it's pretty weird. Uh, and it's it's like scary, but also like unpredictable, and like that's why I can never gauge how much I'm gonna bake ever like literally i will probably never be able to gauge how much i'll make in a year does that stress you out or does that give you hope i think it's a i think it's a great thing because it's like sky's the limit you know what i mean it's like i could outdo last year and i'll give you an example uh when i said in 2022 i did 68,000 in brand deals alone on in stream ads i believe between facebook and youtube i did I want to say 80,000 combined. Oh, wow. And that's this is all pre-tax. Um, so I cleared like 110,000-ish in a year, in, in 2022, around there. So post-tax, you got some food stamps and yeah. some McDonald's uh -huh. gift certificates. Yep. I was I was enough to buy three Big Macs after my, 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 my walk away, my takeaway. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I lived in Dubai for many years. It's tax-free, so this, oh whole, my God. this whole tax thing is, is hilarious. I've contemplated Vegas many times, but even as a creator, 
uh, I, I've looked into this. I don't know. I haven't done a lot of research on this, but um, even if I lived in a different state, I still have to pay California taxes because my entities, Facebook and YouTube, are here. So I have to pay my where my business is, quote unquote, where my where my job or my employers are. I have to pay the state tax at that, unless I LLC myself. But I don't have to LLC yet. You got to LLC I know. yourself, yeah, and put it in like uh, what like Delaware, Florida, Texas, Nevada, okay. like Washington State, right? All right. They all have low taxes, low uh, no no state income tax. tax. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I would exactly. Um, but nonetheless, even with paying taxes and getting absolutely manhandled by the the long arm of the of the government uh i've still i still absolutely killed it in 2022 and i was like oh my god this is the best year i've ever had like income wise of my life even with tv and film or whatever um and so in that year it was like like what like 60 40 yeah 60 percent income from in stream and 40 percent from brand deals yeah most of the time for most creators it's usually they make most of their money from brand deals yeah that's what you've heard like mm-hmm. people say like oh yeah you might have you know two or three million views on a on a video but it's it's the branding that uh, pays the bills yeah because brands will give you big lump sums up front right or like at a time as opposed to a video might take you x amount of time to make that money whatever uh so that is probably the ringing true case uh this year the, the whether this as in 2023 my last this past year in 2023 was are like massive like 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 a i'm still baffled honestly like and i didn't but because of that strategy that i implemented right so which is brilliant by the way like that shows a that shows a, a lot of entrepreneurialism yeah i just try well i'm like i'm my own boss like and i gotta figure out my own moves and how can i level up my own game and know my value but not overcharge because i didn't want to be known as like oh, he's, you know what I mean? Greedy, like where I'm asking for $15,000 or something like that. I want to earn it. And I've earned it by maybe multi-posting with those those platforms and they and give the brand the choice on how much to pay me. Not me say, give me $10,000. I'll be like, you can give me $10,000 and I will do this for you. Or you can give me this much money and I will still do this for you. Like, and give them the option. And yeah. this way I feel like everyone's winning because I'm not strong arming them into a deal. Well, you're you're treating yourself like a platform, right? You're treating yourself like um, like bringing in these brands and keeping them in your ecosystem. Yeah. Like what? It like again, like it, it can't be a one and done. Like you just can't make money. Mm-mm. You, you can't support your exactly. They're always going to have more campaigns. They're always going to want to come back. But if you're too strong off the front, they're going to be like, well, if, if we can't afford to can't afford to book him seven more times. Yeah. But if he works with our rates, like I do. I will get those seven more deals. And I'll give it a perfect example. Sony. I worked with Sony um, for several different movies. They came to me one time and they're like, hey, what's your rate? I said my rate. They said, great, we can hit that. We'd love to work with you. Awesome. The next time they came to me, they're like, we're going to be fully transparent. Each movie has a different budget and they're marketing. This movie didn't have as much as the first movie we did. So we can only offer you this. And I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. I'm like, this seems like good. I, I like, I can see a good video idea for this. So I will do this. Like, yes, I'm going to get a good video out of it anyway. So Sony comes to you they, and you know, says, uh, and says, we want you to promote whatever. Fill in the blank movie. Yeah. How do you promote a movie? Exactly. Uh, and this can be my style. So some creators, usually the ones who do the deals are the ones who do movie reviews and they hold up a little microphone to the screen. And they're like, let's talk about blah, 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 blah. I just saw this, 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 and this. I don't do that. I do like, no, no that sounds boring. <laughs> that sounds really like... <laughs> I do. I don't want to hear what you think. Like, so tell me about the damn movie. I do. I do like skits, based off of the premise of the movie, or in association with the movie, or ex- for example, dressed as a Disney character on a on a treadmill. Yeah. No. Yeah. As something like that. That wasn't a brand deal, but yes, a skit that pertain that can be watched, and someone can be like, "This is hilarious." And then some of my favorite comments to get are, "I had no, I had no idea this was even an ad." Because they would have no idea. Like, that's how you've transcended creativity. I want people to not realize they're watching an ad, and that's what brands appreciate. And I have to get stern with brands sometimes because they're like, please say this, say this. And I'm like, do you want this video to perform? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, then I cannot say these things. I can definitely cover all of these call to actions that you're looking for, but I can't sit there and say these lines like a robot because your video will not do well. And I want it to do well for you, for the for the promotion, everything, for myself and for my brand everything and they go okay and they trust me i give them the video and they go this is amazing wow you killed it i'm like thank you for trusting me. 
So for example, how thank do you, you for leaving me alone <laughs> and letting me be creative? Do my job. Yeah. Uh, how many people want to give you notes and want to like stick their fingers into your creative process? This drives me insane. Yeah. Like when I was making travel content, traveling all around the world, sometimes we work with tourism brands or tourism <laughs> companies. Sometimes we work with clothing brands. Travel. Travel clothing, stuff. Yeah. Shoes. And all of them wanted something or, or the broadcaster wanted me to make sure that I included like filming in one country. But it was an adventure show and that country wasn't like adventurous, mm. but they got like good ratings from there. And if we filmed there, then we would get, they would get mm. some advertising deal unlocked. And there was always like stuff behind it. And, and that was actually why I just went totally independent mm. because I was like, I'm making content that is, you know, hopefully going to last yeah. decades yeah, and, you know, to, to cheapen it with a reference here or something right there. you want to make it, it organic. Dates, it dates it too yeah. like i really wanted my content to be uh something that you know someone could watch 10 years from now and not know when it was filmed right but the, the moment you start putting those time pegs in mm. for advertising purposes right you lose all of that uh quality i think yeah uh yeah you exactly everything you're saying is, is so spot on um the the how you go about doing it more so is keeping it organic. I stress that enough to Brett. Like when they they want their, there's no problem. I get it. If they want to put their, they they want to, they're like, please, this is how we want it to look. I get that. Like, tell me, let me absorb that and let me translate it because I know my audience. I know content. That's why you're here. That's why you're in my inbox mm. because you know, I know, and you know, I can help you. And that's why you're here. So let's acknowledge that. I know you want this to look and feel like you're doing it, but I'm not a puppet. Right. I, I'm i going to create something for you, and it's going to be, and if you have notes after the fact, if you want me to cut something out, I ask a lot of questions up front too. I'm like, what do you need me to cover? What are you looking for? Is there anything I can't say? Yada, yada. I, I ask all that. That saves you so much time on the back end. Yeah, because I refuse to do edits, and I have not had to do edits ever, yeah. uh, and it's worked so far. The only thing I've had to like edit, quote unquote, is they're like, oh, just trim it down a little bit this here and here parts. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But the concept has never had to change. I've never had to reshoot anything. I've never had to redo or re anything. I always no sure. no notes about wardrobe or the nope. or the cat in the back nope. ground. Nope. Nothing nope. like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously the don't show brands and stuff. So I always make sure my backgrounds are clear of any branding or any other things on my walls or whatever. Um, Behind our curtains here, we just have tons of like Nike and mm, yeah, all of the memorabilia, all of the things you've worked for. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, when it comes to uh, doing these brand deals, it's been incredible. And I, I'm still, like I said, sh shocked that this is my position I'm in, especially from where I started to where I'm at. And 2023 was my biggest year I've ever had. And in that year, actually in the first six months of 2023, I made more money in the first six months of 2023 that I did in the nine years of doing TV and film. And Are you serious? Times. In the first six months? Yeah. In the first six months of last year, I cleared 80000 And that was arguably more than I made in any TV and film, anything, in the nine years. Because the TV and film jobs were like 3000 4000 But that's like, you know, nothing notable, nothing massive bank account changing, right? Sure. And so that's just the first six months from, June, from January to June. Fast forward to 2023, uh, total, I cleared $215,000 in brand deals alone. That's incredible. Not counting uh, in-stream ads. That's just brand, and this is pre-tax. Uh, but I'm like dumbfounded. I'm like, I because I don't, add, you know, I keep a log, but I'm not like, I, I'm not like, oh, like charging more or anything. I'm just... Those, that strategy that I implemented about giving the brand an offer to either post to one platform here or post to four platforms here or, or, or anywhere in between. And to white label, which I think is- Oh, whitelist, yeah. yeah to, to, but that's not even that. In, if we're talking rates, the whitelisting fee is only 1500 bucks. No. Oh. I'm, I'm not even like crazy, but I'm like, oh, here, just add that on top because I want to sell them on like the main deal, like right. the big the big fish. Uh, and if we're also talking about rates- I'm I I'm more I more I'm no problem talking about like what I charge for a video um for the size that I am if there if it helps anyone out there for one 40 to 60 second video 
uh, posted to any one of my platforms, flat rate 5,000. Okay. But if it includes your cat, it's an extra 45,000. So it's, so it's a 50,000 if the cat is in. Massive bump. And if, you're, and, if you're, and if your mom is in it, then oh, holy shit. Is, yeah, we're talking big numbers if my mom's in it. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just flat rate 5,000. And that's what it has gotten to. That's what it's currently at. That's, I started at like 1,200, and then I moved it to like 1,500. And then I did 2,000 and 2,500. You know, that was all through 2023, depending on my audience growth, wherever my numbers were at. Hey, but how do you make the decision like that your time and your energy and your following and your audience is worth X, Y, or Z? Because there might be someone listening to this being like, this dude's worth 15 to 20 You're posts. You're probably and, right. And how do you, how do you make that? How do you even like, cause that's the problem with this town. Uh-huh. I look <laughs> that's at- That's the problem I- with this country <laughs> is it, is that is that so many people are actually willing to overpay you're in right. some cases and, and you just never know. I could probably be making, uh, you're absolutely right. There is someone listening to this saying, I'm an idiot, I should be charging more. And you're absolutely right. I could be charging more, but I fall back and I digress to the argument of, I want that brand to come back. And I would rather make $40,000 from one brand as opposed to a $20,000 one-time deal from them not knowing if they're going to come back. I'd rather make, have them use me 10 times and be their golden boy mm-hmm. for the next year and pocket that much money longevity-wise as opposed to a one-off banger hit because I charge $20,000 for one post. It's so good to be consistently used. <laughs> it is, yeah, to be wanted yeah. consistently. That can mean a lot of different things, but yeah. we're going to use that as the uh, as the business uh, terminology yes. of having big brands come back to you and uh, use your, borrow your exposure. Yeah, yeah. so I, uh, here, let me just see here. Uh, I have my rate breakdown. Oh, this is great. I, by the way, thank you for being so incredibly transparent about oh, all this. Oh, because of course. People are going to watch this, and you're, you're providing, like, this is like a master class, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people are like, click the link and sign up for my master class for this. No, I, I here's the thing. I We'll, we'll shoot the master class this afternoon. <laughs> I know what it's like to have no help. Uh, like, I know what it's like. And I started, and I had to make... I had to do everything myself with very little help, very little, like I had to figure everything out on my own. So anytime I can help someone or offer. Um, you got to pay it forward. I Yeah, I, whether it's a creator friend or whether it's, you know, uh, any any possible way that I can offer value uh, with what I what has gotten me here, it's what I'm, no one is going to be my competition. Like I'm not saying no one's competition, but like I don't, feel giving information to someone is going to lessen my lessen my growth that's the that's the healthiest we are way to see it. we're all individuals working yeah. It's, uh, yeah. no one's going to take away from my in, like no one can uh, people can replicate me but no one can do but like no one can be me yeah. you know what i mean so like at the end of the day i can have someone who makes content just like me and is exactly like me in every other way but they're not me and i will never look at anyone else's competition like I just, and those brands are coming to you because you are you. So there's not a lot of like, correct. You know, it's 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 nice actually. I think that's one of the nice things about being a creator is that the brands come to you because you're you. I feel like it gives right. me more sticking power, right, to have a longer career when those brands buy into who you are. Yeah. Uh, so I have my rate breakdown. Okay. All right. So what I what I tell brands is I'm like, um, I give them a reference. I'm like, here's a reference. For my below rates and I say TikTok and I say my followers Facebook my followers so they have like a, a guide like oh here's why he's justifying this right uh, so for one 40 to 60 second video posted to any of my one platforms or any of my one of my four platforms that I'm on whatever they want excuse me 5500 is what I'm at okay. for one video one video on Instagram 5500 here you go out the door done for one video posted to two of my platforms, not two videos, but one video posted twice, let's say TikTok and Instagram, it would be 8,500 or 4,250 per post. So it's now less than doing one. Yeah. So you're adding value by having them work more with you. $3,000 more for posting at two places. Double, double the exposure, but not double the cost. Correct. Yes. Uh, like a McDonald's upgrade to a large for 89 cents more. Or now it's a Big Mac meal for twenty five dollars. There's a lot of lot of McDonald's references on this podcast. We're we're gonna order some Big Macs right after this. 
I'm starving. It's already two o'clock. I know. Uh, and then one. So now for three platforms, uh, for one one video posted to three platforms, it's eleven thousand five hundred dollars, or three thousand eight hundred and thirty three dollars per post. Yeah. If you divide it out. So you're giving them the aggregate and getting the cost per per platform yep. down, and that's yep. the that's the key. Yep. And yeah. then uh, the four. So for all four platform for all four platforms, fourteen thousand five hundred dollars or thirty six twenty five per post. So it divides it out. So to them, they're like, oh wow, we're getting more for our money, which makes them feel valued. Me, it's not I'm not doing anything more than posting it to those platforms. Sure. Which doesn't cost me anything else. I don't have to make another video. Uh, and then as we were talking about the extra usage fee, which is a fifteen hundred dollar flat rate add on if they decide to whitelist, promote, use internally, whatever they want to do with it. If they want to keep it, use it, post it on their page, I don't care. If they will say plus whitelisting in their pitch, they'll be like, this plus whitelisting and whatever. Uh, a lot of times, though, they might wait until they see what you've created and how it's being sure. responded to before they ask for that whitelisting, right? Because then, then they know they've got something. True. Uh, uh, I haven't had that happen yet. All the whitelistings I've had have been in the initial contract up front. Because your reputation is fucking stellar and people <laughs> love you, so you don't have to worry about it. I mean, they, they trust, in the pro like, trust in your creator and trust in the process, and I just continue to try to have fun and, and make the videos, the best videos I can, whether it's a branded video or not, I want them to be seamless. I want a non-branded video to look just as good as a branded video. So when people watch it, they don't see any difference and it's enjoyable regardless of if I put hashtag ad on the video or not. Um, but when we were talking about earlier, how you were saying, oh, can I make money off of my brand deals? And now here's where I also, this is a little tidbit information for everyone out there. Let's say the brand, you're the brand, you're Nike, and you're like, hey, we want you to make a video only to TikTok. We'll pay your flat rate, whatever. It only goes on TikTok. Plus some OnlyFans Plus pictures of your feet. Fans, pictures of throw wearing that in. shoes on your hands. Please. Please. Use lots of, lots of socks. Um, and so they want me to post it on one platform and that's it. I'm like, great, cool, right on. And... I post a Nike video and it's a good video. They love it. They approve it. They say it's great. And then it just bombs, Yeah, which I've had happen. I've had brand deal because sometimes the hashtag ad will ruin a video. Hashtag sponsored, just the algorithms like no one sees this. Really? They just want to hide it because I don't, I don't, because you, because they know you're getting paid. So I, they just bury it. I don't know what it's like a thing. Creators will like not all brand deal. I've had brand deal videos do well and others not do well. It just it is what it is. Sometimes people don't like the video and that's just the nature of the beast mm. and brands are it's not like they get mad at me you know it, it I, if they approve the video and it looks good and they're happy they just want the video out there and sometimes they'll put money behind it but let's say it tanks on tiktok let's just say it just doesn't do well and i'm like well i feel like an idiot <laughs> like oh this this just hurts me like i i feel bad right because something i've done isn't doing well i will then post that video on youtube or instagram on your other platforms as a way of making up for it or non-sponsored yeah just a freebie because they it's not it's legally i i can because it's not they're not paying me to put it here so i don't have to put ad or anything they only have to legally i have to put ad on where i was paid to put it yeah i can put it on youtube do you have to put ad or paid partnership if the, you are getting FTC, paid is that is that like a thing now the ftc is like the the brand deal guideline people they're like the organization that like if you're doing a branded video, it needs to follow these guidelines and it has to have hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored or hashtag partner, Sony partner or whatever. It has to let people, the viewer know you're watching an ad. Okay. Some form or way. But I'll take that video and I'll go put it on YouTube as a non-sponsored video. Maybe I'll cut the part out that says ad or whatever. I'll adjust it. But it's still the overall promotion of that campaign. Mm -hmm. And I'll throw it on YouTube and then it'll do well. Oh, really? Sometimes. Because you have a new sponsor or, no. or whatever, and the algorithm just goes with it. It could. Oh, people are watching it as a normal video, and, I, and it's a, I don't know, but I'll utilize it, and I'll put it on there as a, not an ad, as just because I decided to post it out of my own goodwill, because I was like, well, well, I'll post it here, even though it wasn't in our deal, and I'm not getting paid for this. And you'll let them know that you're doing this out of like- I do it on, I do it on the back end. So when I email them, and I send them the analytics of the first video that didn't do so well, because they're like, oh, let's see the analytics, how the shares, the comments, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hey, I recognize that this video didn't do as well as you probably wanted, or as I probably wanted. So I went ahead and put it on YouTube, and it did a few hundred thousand on YouTube. 
And here are the analytics for that as well. And they're usually overjoyed with like, wow, thanks for posting this elsewhere than we originally agreed to. You're the best. We love this. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. And all, all is well. So I th- I try to make up for it if it happens. Um because not every not every video you make, not every episode of TV I made was like yeah, rock, it, like a home run. It, it happened. I've got a crush. No, it's, it's you're gonna have your highs and your peaks and valleys. But uh, I've had brand deals absolutely crush it, and I've had other ones that just do moderately okay. And uh, like obviously, you know, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you see a creator that you follow, you know, with a brand deal and you notice it's an ad, watch the video, comment on the video, engage with the video because you support that creator and that helps them. And if you want to continue to see them entertain you and support you, it's free. Watching a video is free. It's literally costing you absolutely nothing to watch this ad. And by liking that creator's video, it's not going to put more of Nike stuff on your page because it's that creator's video. It's not a Nike post, right? You're not going to get flooded with Nike spam, right? If we're talking a Nike sponsored video, whatever. But Support that creator because it helps them continue to do what they love and s- entertain you, which you love. Yeah. Like, so everyone wins. All you got to do is leave a comment or whatever and like, oh my God, this is hilarious. Or be like, eh, not, I'm not a fan, but this was a fun video. Something, you know, engage mm-hmm. with that video is all I basically will say. Are there any sections of business uh, that you won't work with like uh a, a gambling or anything like this like are like i know brand, I, like types of brands yeah like i see i see like DraftKings stuff <laughs> everywhere on the internet like is there any is there anything that you just like have chosen like that's not a sec like i don't want to work with um i don't want to work with uh what was i saying earlier jesus uh that were asking me to do all these promotions during covid um these supplements. Oh, so I won't do like weightlifting supplements or anything like that. Gotcha. So I-, I did a deal with GNC. Uh, I don't even have fitness content. Yeah. But I did a deal with GNC. It was for protein powder, but it was for Marvel protein powder. And I am a Disney guy. I'm and a Disney d- there guy. you go. Yeah. So it made sense. Um, but like I said, I only do brand, I only work with brands that are in line with my interests, my personal interests, and or if I could see a great video out of it, I won't do anything that's just left field like 23 and me not nothing to like nothing oh, that th- dna stuff is kind of creepy actually i just i just don't i just don't like if i can't see my i don't know you know what i mean like there's some weird brands out there obviously but it, it has to like but the best part about me is that i'm like a variety page so i can make anything work to a certain extent but i want to make sure that i am I am in line with like I like this brand, or I would use this, or I would. I have to ring true. I can't. I don't want. I, or otherwise, I'd feel fake promoting it. So I have to like personally like it myself in order to want to work with them. Or like I don't do apps. I don't. I don't promote apps. Okay. Like, yeah. It's hard to make a video. You cannot make like let's say like League of Legends, right? Anytime you see a League of Legends ad on youtube or whatever and it's they have to like film the phone yeah of the, like over their shoulder or them like playing it i'm like or show like a full screen of playing gameplay i'm like no i hate anything that has to be on a phone i don't want to promote that give me a tangible item a physical item tell me about a movie so i can recreate a scene or make it something funny whatever for example i did one for 65 with adam driver oh that's a great movie right where he Underrated. where he finds earth before the apocalypse which killed off the dinosaurs he he goes to a different earth he like lands in a different timeline different timeline yeah but i thought it was our earth did i miss it maybe it was our earth i oh yeah cuz he's on a different earth you're right he's on a different one but yeah. he lands on ours before the asteroid yes right. that's what ends up happening and the dinosaurs are chasing him and he's yeah yeah, yeah. that was that was really good actually it's i can't so believe good. i saw it on a i saw it on a plane i can't believe like i don't know what it did here if it wasn't I, like here. yeah no it didn't it wasn't like the craziest box office success but it, it it was probably underrated very under like underrated i guess is the best way to describe it but i did a promo for that movie nice and i how I did it is I went to a movie theater and I asked them if I could film in an empty theater. Uh, I'm doing a brand deal. I was like, I'm doing a brand deal for, you know, 65. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, it's in our theaters right now. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm doing a brand deal for it. And they go, oh, okay, cool. I was like, I just need an empty theater. And they're like, sure. So I brought an inflatable dinosaur suit. One of those inflatable dinosaurs. As you do. Yes. Uh, the green one, not the, not the brown classic one, but like a green, like it looks like the raptor or whatever. And I make the video, 
I film the screen inside the theater, the blank screen. It's just a blank screen. And it shows the clip that they want me to play. The six, Sony wanted me to play a certain part of the movie. Okay. So they gave me footage to use. So I put that on the screen of the movie. Like I superimposed it. On, like it, And it shows like the dinosaur attacking Adam Driver or whatever. And he's shooting it. And it's coming through the, the part where it's coming through like the waterfall or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he's like shooting it. And then all of a sudden, right when the dinosaur... Sticks its head through the waterfall. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I jump out of the screen in the dinosaur suit and land in the theater as if I've now escaped the, the screen and then I'm running through the movie theater as this dinosaur. I leave the movie theater, run across town, across cross still cross, still running. Still running. I like there's a stoplight. There's a part where just right near my house, these cars were parked like it was at a stoplight. We hit the crosswalk and there's cars and I just run past them like like Scooby Doo, and I'm just running, and you don't know where I'm running. Yeah, just hysterically out of your mind. Just running in this dinosaur suit. You're like, what is this video? This dinosaur is running all over town, and I finally get home. I run into my apartment, and next thing you know, I burst through the door. And when I burst through the door, me, I, am also sitting, playing myself sitting on the couch. So I like freak out. Dinosaur is in my dinosaur is in my house. Runs towards my TV, and I jump at my TV. And when I jump at my TV the movie continues. And then I'm like sitting there and I'm like, uh, like as myself. And then I'm like, oh, like, and then I now I'm now watching 65. Right. And I don't remember what I said at the end, but I said something that it was like call to action based or whatever. Um, I was like, well, that's like, I don't know, something dinosaur pun. I said some sort of line. Mm-hmm. But basically the gist was letting people know that 65 is now available at home to watch at home. Oh, right. Like, so, oh, now on, now on, now on streaming service. Now on right. streaming. So I was bringing the theater to home. Nice. And I was bring, so basically it was like, that was the, that was the video. Connect, yeah. Connecting one platform at the theater to the one. At, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like letting people know that 65 was in theaters and now it is available at home. And if you want to watch 65 at home, a small dinosaur has to run, run through the whole house and deliver it like. Yes. Yes. And it's really funny because they love that video so much. We did a follow up. Uh, of the same concept, but instead of me jumping out of the theater, it was me going into a Walmart to celebrate the release of 65 on DVD. They still release DVDs? This was before. Yeah. They, well, now they don't anymore, but at the time it was to celebrate the home release. This was a few months later. Uh, I, I like The video was more set in an organic sense of like, I went into a Walmart as a dinosaur to buy the 65 movie. Mm -hmm. And it's me running into Walmart, looking for the movie aisle, running past people, people like filming me and stuff. And this is all for a brand deal just to run straight to the movie aisle to pick up 65 in a full dinosaur inflatable suit, running to the register and buying the movie and then leaving Walmart. Yeah. And that was it. It was to just, that was the video. Fantastic. So it was, but they came back to me because they wanted to do another promotion again, because I worked with their rates. And like, that was another, that was an example of me working, like changing everything to help fit their budget, et cetera. Um, And you got a second deal out of it. And I got a second. Which is amazing. Okay. Here's one for you. Are you ever going to create your own product? At some stage. In any capacity. In any capacity. Are you ever going to create your own? I have a clothing line. Oh, okay. Well, do you ever make videos to promote your own clothing line through your own? Because cause now you have, like, because I think I, I read somewhere like Mr. Beast makes more money on his on his chocolates now than he does on YouTube videos. Oh, I believe. Oh, wait, what? No yeah. Way. Yeah, somewhere like no. his, his chocolate bar is like hugely successful. I know it's successful, but like, you're talking like when he pulls 40 million views in like an hour, that's an insane amount of money. Yeah. Like, so mm-hmm. I don't know. His chocolate bars would have to be like outselling Hershey's. I think, I think they are. Are they actually? Because yeah. for you, Jimmy. There was, a, there was a, a great interview with him on Joe Rogan. Uh-huh. And he said, um, he was saying like he lives off of his chocolate bar revenues, which are growing massively. And he says like every dollar he makes, I hope I'm quoting this correctly, every dollar he makes from YouTube, he puts back into the videos. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He'll definitely put a majority of his budget into this thing. But as far as like my... I don't know. I would. Lo- I, I. I. have a clothing like a quote unquote a clothing line. Like I have my creator merch. I guess you can say, but it's not like synonymous to me, in where it's like my face on a shirt, or it's not like Mr. Beast's logo or anything like that. Sure. Mine is just, a little more subtle. Yeah, I wanted it to be like anyone could buy this and wear it, and it's not like oh, that's Kurtz. 
like her, that that's that creator guy. It's just a cool. It's just clothing that like with a message, which is literally just keep smiling. It's actually my tattoo. Oh. So it's that's uh, brilliant. Anything that like promotes positivity. I feel like these days, positivity is, is especially in twenty twenty four as we gear up for this beautiful election. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. Uh, yeah, but I have you know a whole a whole like few different designs of of um clothing but i'm not like actively pushing it i don't know it's just there yeah um because i think like eventually like you know you could have such a following where you could you know post something that you make for yourself like even coffee cups or something and you sell like a thousand of them or ten thousand yeah or, or whatever like that and then it's hard though it's hard to turn it is very hard to turn a sale nowadays yeah especially for a t-shirt like and that's why I don't push it as much. Mm -hmm. I would rather people watch my videos and make an absolute killing than mm -hmm. promote my merch. Unless, you know what I mean? Like, I I, I don't need that. I, I don't, but the profit margin of my merch wouldn't, I don't think I would, I would have to pull a lot to surpass what I'm making from my videos. Like, to make, putting the time and effort into it, you know? Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just passing. It's like, it's there, and you can, and I, t and I, I link it every now and then. Sure. But I'm not like, I have merch, guys, please, so I can eat. Like, I, it's just there. It's like, hey, if you if you like my content and you like what I believe in and you want a cool shirt, there's a shirt there, and and I have it available. It's for some people who are like, ooh, I wish you had this. You know, I'm like, I do. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to connect the first half of this to the last half of okay. this. So as you, so in 2019, you were having a, you know, you were riding a pretty good wave of film and television work. You had a agent. Yes. You got into social media at a really great time and you fell in love with it and you were, you're, you worked hard at it, but you also had a, a natural passion for it. Yeah. Just entertaining in general. Yeah. Like just, which is its core, which is great. So now you've built up this massive audience. People follow you. People watch you, listen to you to figure out what to buy, to what to, what to watch, all of this stuff. At what stage do you think that what you're doing now on social media will become success or, or at a level high enough that you could maybe even go back to film and television and maybe start calling more of your own shots i've been asked this a few times uh if i would like still pursue tv and film or if i would go back to it etc well, well so many so many casting agents and so many directors and producers ask you what your social media following mm -hmm. is before you even audition for a role mm -hmm. because they want to know now that, oh, this person, this actor, actress, whatever, has 5 million Instagram followers and they're all going to buy movie tickets. So that's why you're in the movie. Like, right. that's where we are now. Yeah, and it's terrible. It's awful. It's, it, and, and I, I was actually talking about this with my friend. Uh, uh, there are content creators. I will not say that who they are. I will not say who they are. But we all know there are content creators who have done stints in tv and film and they are atrocious and they bomb because the content creator knows how to act in an edited content creator video but not a tv and film movie yeah. and it's just bad and you're like this is dog shit why am i watching this but they got they, hey get your bag like you know what i mean like if you don't make that money and you don't care about that image that you're going to have of yourself after doing that sure go buy out more power to you uh but my sake I grew up acting first, right? Which is why, I, which is why I think it's, which is why I think it's so interesting that this might come full circle. Sure, and even with that, having the experience of TV and film, knowing what it's like, you know, on set and like how to deliver things in a TV and film manner, not a social media energy level, but even with that, it would have to be a very unique situation for me to even entertain the idea because. I I like TV and film, but I'm not like so crazy about it to where I'm. I don't know. What I, What about here's another one. Here's another. I need, oh, a, I need a perfect scenario of of a of a situation for me to be like, yeah, I'll do it. Here's a perfect scenario. Okay, are you ready? Tell me. Uh, you have you know millions of followers across all your social media platforms, mm -hmm. and I'm producing a Broadway musical. Okay. And I'm gonna hire you to not only promote the musical on your social media platform, I'm but I also want you to be in the musical as I'm one in. of the leads. Yes. That's different. Did we hit, did we hit it? <laughs> That's not TV and film, though. No. It's live theater, 
Live theater, which is your passion, is an automatic win. No matter what it is, I will do live theater. Um, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. I will do any Broadway show. Uh, I will do a live theater show. Uh, I did one a few years back, um, bef- right before it was before I did social media or like fell into it. Uh, I was still in the acting, the the TV and film era, but I was away from the the stage for a while. Um, but I did a charity show. I did Beauty and the Beast uh, for a kids charity uh, at the Orpheum Theater in L.A. Amazing. It was one night, one night donate the most money possible for these kids and all of the lead actors were hired to play the lead roles and all of the townspeople and also all of the enchanted objects all of the dishes and the dancing knives were the kids that's fantastic so we got to perform with the kids but the adults carried the show and then everyone in the audience would like donate for their foundation and everything it was great and that was cool uh, I would do a, another musical in a heartbeat it's just a different energy uh, as opposed to TV and film I like the experience of TV and film. I would love to shoot a movie. I would love to shoot a TV show. I'd love to, like my like Sam in The Brother's Son, I would love to be a part of something like that. But the politics behind the TV and film world is awful. It's, it's painful. It's That's one of the reasons I started this, because I can control it. Uh, the, 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 the egos... And the the who's the who's and the what's the what's. I'm like, look, I just wanna I just wanna show up and have fun and make this thing and like, but you know, like, I don't know, I don't know, I, I'm not I'm not knocking it completely, but it would have to be like such a good opportunity and be so right that I'd be like, you know what, like I would love to do this. But fun fact, really fun. Speaking of movies, yeah, I did help with a movie that is coming out soon. Are you allowed to talk about it? I am allowed to talk about it. I'm not in it, but I am the musical voice of the band. I am the Wait, lead singer. Did sing- you do a animated film? No, it is live action. And the lead singer is lip syncing my voice. Oh, wow. It's kind of like a Zac Efron high school musical scenario, but it's not a, mu- it's not a musical. It's just a movie with music in it. Uh, it's called Rock Bottom. Okay. And it is- where, where we're all... Hanging out these days, anyways. <laughs> exactly. It is the story of. It is like the. It's like Spinal Tap meets Dodgeball. I love Dodgeball. Yeah, so that's one like, of my favorite movies. It's like an eighties. It's a modern set in modern time, but like an eighties rock energy. It's about a band who is washed up. They were big in the eighties, but then they're washed up. They're all, you know, they're all out of their prime, and they get an opportunity of a lifetime to open up for a mega superstar, and get the band back together. And then when they get the band back together, their lead singer gets injured and they have to replace the lead singer, but they don't know how or who or why. And they end up replacing the lead singer with a pizza delivery boy. Fantastic. And the pizza delivery boy can sing, like, obviously. And the pizza delivery boy is Jake Bon Jovi. Jake Bon Jovi, As in, John Bon yeah. Jovi's son. Yes. Wow, not bad. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, who also coincidentally can't sing. How can you be John Bon Jovi's Son, I don't know. Not have those, and not even want to train it. I don't know, but he can't sing. But he, he he's the he's the lead, and I am the vocal track of the entire musical performance of that entire movie. Ten, That's fantastic. Ten, ten plus songs, and I am Jake's voice. So when Jake sings, it's it's me, but it's 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 sold as him. Obviously, That's brilliant. When's but, it coming out? Uh, I believe we're shooting for the end of this month, actually. That's amazing. And is it a, the- a theatrical release or straight to streaming? Or it what's... will be a straight to streaming. We don't know which. We haven't locked in the platform yet as to where it's going, yeah. but it is rock bottom, the movie. Uh, uh, and yeah, you can search, you can Instagram it or et cetera, but it hasn't, there's been very few little, pub- we haven't done the publicity run yet. So this is, we're getting there. Like there's stuff on Instagram about it and it's been dropped, but uh yeah, so like musical wise, I got to do all the music and you know, so I'm super like the music turned out awesome. Like, well, because you did it. I mean, let's be honest. I did it. Yeah, I, and you're passionate about it. Yeah. I mean, I'm passionate about musical theater singing. This is like eighties rock, like your feel good sing out loud in, in the car, like you're screaming your head off, like Bon Jovi music. Yeah, but like literally. every like how many like it's either Bruce Springsteen or Bon Jovi. Yeah. Those were your car driving yeah. open road Very. songs from the late eighties, early nineties. Very yeah. and that has all of this same energy and I and honestly like I heard and it's 
my director who did the who directed the movie, he's also plays in the band. Oh. So he's orchestrated all of this, the whole everyone playing the music and their original songs. Uh, and these songs, these things just are just they're just fantastic. Like the I can't even describe like I'm like, holy shit. Like the like you play this, this is like a live show energy kind of music. Um, so I'm excited for the music to drop so I can promote the music, obviously, from the movie. That's fantastic. But yeah. And maybe even take it on tour. We're talking about something like that. Not like a tour tour, but like a promotional movie meets local tour charity fundraiser kind of things. Something in that ballpark. With some live music. With live, no. We Play, played by you, yeah. Yeah, we absolutely would do live music. Um locking in different venues etc but that's exciting uh and i know the i'm excited for people to hear the music because i don't sing often even though i have a musical background i don't do a lot of musical content yeah but uh when every time every time i do a song or something people are like yo that's you I'm like yeah and they're like what yeah so that's always that's always cool but that's that's as far as the movie the movie realm goes currently as of right now i i'm so invested in social media and i love it that i'm like so content especially after a year i had last year like the average actor isn't even close to that you know what i mean like no. yeah and you don't have to worry about sag i don't have to worry. i don't have to worry about sag like yeah yeah which is well for kind of influencers were kind of brought into that which was so annoying during the whole strike and i was like i think you guys are so free and so clear of, away from but all of talking that talking about movies put influencers in the crosshairs even though we're like it was a great, it was a whole thing. I didn't want to get into it. It was a whole thing of like the, inf yeah, the separating the creator from the actor who is also a creator. Sure. As opposed to me, who I'm just full time creator. I'm not trying to do TV and film or whatever, but we were being put in the same box as villains. Yeah, it's ridiculous. We're going to I premieres and whatever. And I'm like, I don't even want to entertain that. No. Yeah. It's insane. Because the whole reason why you started doing your own thing is so that you wouldn't have anyone tell you what the fuck to do. Yeah. And that's and then you want to have like what some union tell you what you can and can't do. Yes. What I'm not even Yeah, exactly. It doesn't work. That was like no. They tried to get their hands SAG tried to get their hands on content creating, like or social media something. Yeah. A while ago. And I was like, Nope. I was like, you and I was like, No way you are unionizing the Wild West. It will never happen. Yeah. Ever. Stick to TV and film. We love you for that. Support your actors and support your writers. Please. They get I, I wanted everyone to get what they deserve a million times over. Yes, cost of living's going up. People need more money. Please pay them more. Why is this an issue? But don't come after content creators. Stay away from content creators. Nowhere to draw the you are line. On your phones, you focus on the people on your screens. You yeah. know what I mean? Like dude. That's as long as that happens, I'm cool with that. So. Well, I watch all your stuff on my 72 inch. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, there you go. So you're on, you're on my you're on my screen, anyways. Perfect. All right. So, um, so what are you looking forward to in 2024 apart from Rock Bottom? Maybe coming out at the yeah. end of at the end of January. What else is on your agenda for the next couple months? Uh, February. February's Rock Bottom. Uh, did I say January? Either end of this month, early sometime, next month, sometime soon. Coming soon. I'm gonna I'm gonna post all your social channels and tag you across okay. everything. So anyone that likes what you what this conversation is, they'll yeah, you. yeah, check yeah. me out. Um, I'm just excited. I I I'm always excited for the unknown. I I don't know what this year is gonna bring. It could be worse than last year. It could be better than last year. It could be the exact same. I as long as I get to continue to make content and do the exact same thing every single day in a different fashion and, and I think this is also a testament as to why I've lasted so long is because I don't do the same thing content wise like sure. I'm I, I don't even know my next video I couldn't even tell you I, I have a list of like things but I don't know what I'm going to post my audience doesn't know what I'm going to post and I think that's what makes it so exciting is because I'm doing it with everyone at the same time right and I don't know what opportunities are going to come this year and what I'm going to be able to turn into content and I don't know what other quote unquote treadmill video ideas are going to come my way. Not that it's going to be a treadmill video, but an idea random like that. The treadmill video hooked me. I think that's it. It could yeah. another something like that. I did an adaptation. Mm -hmm. I took the treadmill format and adapted it outside of the treadmill. I put it in a car recently. Uh, and I did um, listening to music during different um, decades in your car. And so it was literally, I was dressed in each decade's format with the popular, a very popular song from that decade, and it would just jump cut to me and how we acted in the car during those decades. Yeah. 
So in the seventies and the eighties, were just smoking the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Because now you can't. Yeah, you can't do that without getting shit on. Yeah. And then in twenty twenty, what two or three? You know, everyone's mask. wearing masks. I had a mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was that uh, in a video, mm -hmm. but it was the same formula of music and represent visual representation of a character or an outfit. Cut, 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 cut. So if I come up with something else like that, great. But uh, looking forward to just continuing to create, continuing to grow. Um, you know, expanding my brand reach and or anything else that comes my way, I'll, you know, I will, I'll cross it then, but I'm just like onto the next, you know, always, always onto the next. What's next is kind of my, uh, my life, which awesome. is cool. It's, it's cool. It's like unknown, but it's also like, it's also cool at the same. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. know. Well, I think that's a great place to leave it. Are yeah, you, you feeling you feeling good? I feel good. You feel good? I feel fucking amazing. Yeah, least, what a good shot. I know there's probably a million other side questions. Is there anything else? You, I'm I'm here. No, I mean yeah, you can come back anytime as well to promote anything you yeah. want. Just have a deep chat. Um, but no, I just it's fantastic. It was yeah. great to great to meet you. Let's do the next episode on like the side of a mountain. Yes, uh, <laughs> slightly slightly different production budgets. I'm very familiar with that actually. But we can <laughs> we can cast on the side of Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro is a little far. We could go to, um, what's the lowest? San Bernardino. <laughs> we could get to, let's right get to San Bernardino. San Bernardino, or, California. <laughs> or we could do the, uh, we could do the Entourage one and, and go to, um, we could go do the Entourage one and go to uh, Joshua Tree National Park and just oh, eat Josh. mushrooms and just film it and see what happens. Right, right. This, <laughs> the unknown. Yes, into the unknown. That's it. I love it. Well, thank you for having me and thanks everyone for listening. Uh, yeah, this is great. Beautiful, beautiful. Fun. What I like to do at the end here is switch to that view, bang, so we can shake hands, oh, say thank you so hey. much for swinging by. Buddy. Thank you. And then I like to go back to you, and then I fade to black. Yeah. Production quality, baby.